في دقيقتين نبتدي بالوقت اه ابتدت خلاص معلش ابتديت بشويه شكرا اذا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نعود اليوم إلى ندوات إعادة كتابة تراث العالم العربي أحب أن أحيي في البداية كل الحضور والمتابعين أحيي المحاضرة الأستاذة ديانا دارك وأيضا مديرة الجلسة الدكتورة عفاف بدران I would like to salute, salute all the attendees and followers uh, I salute the lecturer, uh, lecturer Mrs. Diana Dark and moderator of the session, Dr. Afaf Badran. I would like to talk in the beginning about the creation of the Arab world in the Arab world, which we are trying to do with what we are doing. I would like to remind you that I have been working on the work in 2020 in the United States. It was the title of the Arab world's influence. الإسلامية على العمارة العضوية وتكلمت فيه عن تأثر العمارة القوطية في هندستها بالعمارة الإسلامية كما استشهدت في المقال بالسير رين كريستوفر وهو باني لندن الكلاسيكية حيث قال أن العمارة القوطية هي عمارة سرزينية فيها مميزات العمارة الإسلامية وقد كان لي نقاش مع الباحثة البريطانية السيدة ديانا دارك حول موضوع التراث عموما وحول كتابها كيف شكلت العمارة الإسلامية أوروبا وسررت بقبولها لعرض كتابها في ندواتنا إعادة كتابة التراث في العالم العربي كما سررت لقبول الدكتور عفاف بدران لإدارة الندوة سأقوم بتقديم بطاقة ندوة اليوم وتقديم بطاقة مديرة الجلسة الدكتور عفاف بدران وهي بدورها ستقوم بتقديم بطاقة المحاضرة And I would like to talk about the topic of writing heritage in the Arab world, which we are trying to host who worked on it. I participated in a research paper in 2020 in international conference. It was entitled The Effect of Islamic Mathematical Engineering on Organic Architecture, in which I talked about the influence of on Gothic architecture by Islamic geometry. As I quoted what Sir Ron Christopher, the builder of uh, classical London, said that Gothic architecture is a Sarazenian building with the characteristic of Islamic architecture. I had a discussion with the, the British researcher, Mrs. Diana Dark, on the topic of heritage in general, and especially on her book, How Islamic Architecture Shaped Europe. And I was delighted that she agreed to present her book in our seminar, a seminar Writing Heritage in the Arab World. I was also delighted that Dr. Afaf Badran agreed to moderate this seminar. First, I will present the seminar card of today, and then present the card of sessions, session moderator, Dr. Afaf Badran, uh, she in turn will present the lecturer card. Then, uh, uh, seminar. عرض لكتاب السرقة من السرازينس كيف شكلت العمارة الإسلامية أوروبا Stealing from the Sarazins How Islamic Architecture Shaped Europe المحاضرة الباحثة البريطانية ديانا دارك باحثة متخصصة في تاريخ الفن في الدراسات المشرقية Lecturer ديانا دارك British Researcher Specialized in Art History and Oriental Studies مديرة الجلسة الأستاذ الدكتور عفاف بدران أستاذة أستاذة غير متفرغة في جامعات عدة ومعمارية ممارسة للتصميم المعماري. أه 
Mr. Hadif, uh, you're on mute. Uh, Mr. Hadif, uh, uh, inta, uh, okay, okay. Uh, I, I am I am on uh, now. Uh, إذن كنت أقول أن المدير الجلسة الأستاذ الدكتور عفاف بدران uh, إشراف المهندس هادي السالم سوف أقدم uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, دكتور عفاف بدران كارد إذا uh, مدير الجلسة اليوم uh, moderator دكتور عفاف بدران هي أكاديمية ممارسة للتصميم المعماري قامت بالتدريس وحاضرت في عدة جامعات ومحافل دولية واطلعت بمشاريع لها قيمة اعتبارية في مصر والسعودية وهي مؤسس مركز درب اللبانة للثقافة والفنون والحرف وتنمية البيئة ومؤسس مجموعة درب اللبانة للتصميم والعمارة في القاهرة التاريخية so, دكتور عفاف بدران is an academic and practitioner of architectural design she lot and lectured in a number of universities and international events she uh, under took undertook uh, sorry and was involved in a prestigious project in Egypt and Saudi Arabia founder of Darb Labana for culture and uh, arts and skills and environmental development and uh, Darb Labana group for design and architecture both in historic Cairo. I will the word to Dr. Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. 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 الكارد ظهر هيظهر ان شاء الله وهستسمحك لو لو في حد بيساعد بس كان وي افويد ذا نويز ذاتس مع مع دخول افري بيرسون يس يس ذير از سم ون تو ثانك يو ثانك يو فيري ماتش طيب uh, ندوات اعاده كتابه تراثنا في العالم العربي وي ار ذيس از ذا 12th ليكشر اند ذا تايتل is stealing from the Saracens how Islamic architecture shaped Europe. Um, and the uh, lecturer is Mrs. Diana Dark. She's Middle East cultural expert, degrees in Arabic from Oxford University, and in Islamic art and architecture from SOAS London. She has spent over 30 years specializing in the region among her publications, My House in Damascus, An Inside View of the Syrian Crisis, 2016, The Merchant of Syria, 2018, The Last Sanctuary in Aleppo, 2019, her most recent book, Stealing from the Saracens, How Islamic Architecture Shaped Europe, received three Book of the Year 2020 awards. She is a non-resident scholar, at the widely respected Washington DC think tank, MEI, the Middle East Institute. Uh, I will just say that in Arabic for everybody. Oh, okay, okay. I hope oh, the, I, I can't it's okay. Hear. It's okay. I, I think most of the people speaking Arabic already read it. Okay. Yes, uh, Diana, you can go ahead and share, please, uh, okay. your presentation. Yes, I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to begin by explaining about the title and why I wrote the book. So yeah. the title, uh, okay. So I think maybe, yes, L let me just say, a, you know, like a paragraph and then I'll stop okay. and you, you, you summarize and then I'll move on to the next slide. Yes. I think it might okay. be easier. Very good. Um, yeah. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see whatever seems uh, to be. Okay. So stealing 
from the Saracens is a controversial title and I chose it very deliberately because the word Saracens must appear in the title because of Christopher Wren saying that in his opinion, what we call the Gothic style should be called the Saracen style. And of course, Christopher Wren's big uh, masterpiece was his uh, the uh, St. Paul's Cathedral in London, in the picture there on the right, in which he says he used Saracen vaulting in the dome. And so the cover of the book on the left there is actually the dome, the inside dome of St. Paul's Cathedral. Um, and he says that he used it because it was the best. And stealing from, the reason for that is that the, uh, the derivation of Saracens uh, is from Saraka, to steal in Arabic, and Sarakin, people who steal. So it's like a double irony saying, isn't it crazy that we stole things, if you like, we took things from people who we call thieves. And so this is why it's, uh, it's the, the, the title is a double irony. It's not meant to be taken literally. Okay. أنا هلخص هي بتقول إن طبعا أنتوا شايفين إن العنوان مثير للجدل جدا بس هي بنت هذا العنوان على المعماري البريطاني كريستوفر رين اللي هو عمل بنى سانت بول كاثيدرال اللي هي زهرة قدامنا في في اللقطة وهو استخدم طريقة القبة اللي استخدموها السرسنز أو السراسنة اللي هي الكلمة دي أطلقت على العرب المسلمين وهي قصدت إنها تستعمل كلمة السرقة من السراسنز لأن في تعريف لكلمة سراسنز إنهم السارقين فهي بتقول يعني يعني العجب ان احنا بنسمي الناس دي سارقين بينما احنا بنسرق منهم وطبعا تخفيفا بتقول او بناخذ منهم الستايل بتاعهم هنتكلم في في الكونتروفيرشال تايتل دي في, في الاخر في, في النقاش يس جو هيد داينا اوكي سو اي هوب يو كان سي ماي نيكست سلايد ناو يس يو كان Excellent, good. So this is to explain the reason why I wrote the book. So this is the fire in Notre Dame Cathedral in April 2019. And if it hadn't been for that fire, I would never have written this book. <laughs> Because to be honest, I assumed that people knew the origins of Gothic architecture. So it was when I saw the reaction in the world of outrage and horror and people saying, especially the French people saying, it's our national identity going up in flames. It made me a little bit angry because I thought, wait a minute, don't they understand that everything in Gothic architecture, apart from the flying buttresses, its origins are from further east, not from France at all. And so this is why I felt I I had to explain in some detail about a history that seems to have been somehow lost or forgotten. And um, on the right hand side, the picture there of the decapitated saint, this is Saint Denis or Saint Denis, uh, who is the patron saint of France. And this statue is on the west facade of Notre Dame as the patron saint of France. And in Gothic times, uh, people, uh, uh, there was a lot of ignorance and confusion and people thought that uh, this Denis Saint-Denis, they confused him uh, with, a, they, they thought he was a Roman martyr who was decapitated But they also thought 
he was a disciple of St. Paul because a, um, a very famous book appeared, which they thought was written by this disciple. However, so all this, all this mistake, a medieval muddle, I call it, it was only centuries later that it was discovered that Denis, this Saint Denis, was in fact a Syrian monk from the fifth century. And, and so it was all, <laughs> all this uh, Gothic, uh, where Abbot Suger in his Basilica of Saint-Denis takes credit for, for Gothic architecture and talks about the light and letting in the light. All of this, it turns out, is based on a, a mistaken identity from the Middle Ages. Okay, I hope I can sum up yeah, that. Yeah, don't worry, it's a bit complicated, I know. <laughs> but it's quite okay. important. <laughs> اللقطة اللي أمامنا هي لكنيسة نوتردام في في فرنسا في عاصمة فرنسا و و وهي زي ما أنتم شايفين هي في حريق فيها وده تم الحريق ده حصل في سنة 2019 والدنيا تقلبت على على الموضوع ده وكان في حزن شديد جدا من ال من الفرنسيين وهي واللقطة دي أو الحدث ده كان هو تقريبا الحافز ليها انها تبدا هذا الكتاب خاصه لما سمعت الناس بتتباكى وبتقول ان ان الهويه القوميه بتاعتهم اتحرقت فبدات تبحث في, في ان ان ال ان الطراز القوطي اصلا منقول ليهم من سوريا ف او من ال من ال من الشرق اوكي من الشرق بس تخصيصا من سوريا في اللقطة اللي على جنب اللي هي فيها قديس للأسف شايل راسه أو يعني قطع راسه ده كان وهو اللقطة دي على وجهة الكنيسة كان لوقت طويل قوي بيعتقد ان هو أحد القديسين الرومان أو أحد الشهداء الرومان وفي وقت تاني قيل ان هو تلميذ لسان بول واللي هما ما كانوش عارفينه ان ده اصلا شخصية سورية وتم اكتشاف ده وكانت ودي من الحاجات اللي لاحظت ان فيه حاجات كتير قوي بتبقى اما اكذوبة او بتتقال خطأ في التاريخ والناس بتتداوله على ان, على إن هو الحقيقة Go ahead, Diana. Yeah. So Syria, so, so the, the real Saint, Saint Denis, Saint Denis, as I said, is a Syrian monk from the uh, 5th century. And so that takes us now to Syria. And uh, those of you who know Syria may know that uh, to the west and a little bit in the limestone hills which is known today as the uh, the dead cities and this is uh, an area of about 700 800 settlements with 2000 churches early churches from the fourth fifth and sixth centuries so this is the very very earliest Christian architecture of churches because of course, before, before the fourth century, uh, Christianity was persecuted under the Romans. And so uh, no church buildings as such were built. It was all kept secret and Christians worshiped in caves or privately in their homes. So it was only after the, what was called the age of persecution at the beginning of the fourth century, only after that, did church architecture begin when, when people, Christians could openly start to build the first churches. And this group of early churches in Syria, which are now recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2011, these are a kind of treasure trove of the earliest uh, examples of Christian, how early Christian architecture developed. Okay. 
بتتكلم تاني بال... هكمل الجزئية الأولانية إنها ذكرت إن القديس السوري اللي انتوا شفتوا اللقطة بتاعته في الفيد ده كان راهب من القرن الخامس عشر و... وبتقول إن ما كانش فيه بناء لل... للكنائس أبدا قبل القرن الرابع لأن كان ده العصر اللي فيه اضطهاد للمسيحيين ف... ف... قبل هذا التاريخ قبل القرن الرابع ما كانش فيه أبدا بناء للكنائس وبدأت الكنائس تتبني ما بعد هذا اللي هو في القرن الرابع والخامس والسادس وهذه الكنيسة اللي انتوا شايفينها كانت من أولى الكنائس اللي اتبنت وهي في سوريا وهي تم الـ الـ مش الاعتراف بها يعني it was recognized يعني باي يونسكو يعني اليونسكو اعترفت بيها او اقرتها او يعني اعترفت بتاريخها واعترفت بكيانها في سنه 2011 yes go ahead Diana okay yeah so among these uh, early christian sites and early churches in syria the two most famous ones uh, on the left is the one called Kalblauze, which is, which was built in uh, 490. So this is um, uh, uh, fifth century, and it is the earliest example of two towers, twin towers, flanking a monumental entrance, and this was designed to receive the pilgrims. Who were coming to the Basilica of St. Simeon, which is the building on the, on the right hand side. And the Basilica of St. Simeon was the most famous Christian site anywhere in the world at that time. Pe people would come from all over Europe, pilgrims would come uh, on foot and by, by sea and make their way to, um, to St. Simeon's Basilica because the saint. Simeon, he preached from the top of this pillar. In the picture there, this is this little stump of stone is all that remains of his pillar. It used to be very tall and he stood on the top of it and preached from it. Um, but because so many pilgrims came over the centuries and chipped away a little souvenir, a little piece of the pillar, today <laughs> the only thing left is this little stump. <laughs> and sadly, even that stump was blown up in a Russian airstrike in 2016. So it has been, uh, it has been destroyed since then. Oh, okay. The thing we see in the picture is one of the most famous in Syria, and it's called Kalb Loza, and that's what you see on the left. والكنيسة دي من العقد من العقد الخامس أو يعني في سنة 490 ميلادي والملاحظ الجايز مش باين في الصورة قوي بس إن هي بوابة وسط برجين وهي الكنيسة بنت لاستقبال الحجاج والبوابة اللي على اليمين هي باين قدامها في حجر كان ده بيقف عليه القس uh, what's the name of the Saint Simeon? Saint the... Simeon. Saint Simeon. Saint Simeon. Simeon. فكان بيقف على هذا الحجر اللي هو كان كان شكله طبعا أحسن من كده وكان فعلا مكان يعني بلاتفورم أو حاجة يقدر يقف عليها بس مع السنين الحجاج كل حاجة كان بيجي يبقى عايز يأخذ قطعة من هذا الحجر. يتبارك بيها فطبعا بقى شكله بالمنظر ده غير ان في سنة 2016 تعرض لهجوم من او قصف من روسي فكانت النتيجة انه اتدمر So in this basilica of St. Simeon which is uh, built from the local limestone and um, you can see the quality of the stonemasons work because the stonemasons of Syria, they were used to carving this limestone 
which was everywhere around them. So here is one of the very famous, uh, the top of a column in St. Simeon's Basilica with the waving acanthus leaves, as if they're waving in the wind, blowing in the wind. Uh, this is very sophisticated for a fifth century. And in the cathedral of Notre Dame, in the nave of the cathedral, one of the pillars at the, at the beginning has exactly this uh, acanthus leaves waving in the wind. So this tells us that a Syrian mason uh, must have been present um, uh, at the work there. Okay. Um, the of the cathedral of Sinian وهي بتلفت نظركم لان الطبيعه بتاعه نحت الحجر اللي هو الحجر الجيري مميزه جدا وكان هذه الافرع الورقيه بترفرف مع 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 الرياح وده صناعه بنا سوري وهو يعني متفرد جدا فهي لحظة ان في كنيسة نوتردام في نفس المعالجة وده معناها ان في البنا برضو او بنائين سوريين اللي هم عملوا نفس الاشكال دي او احفادهم هم اللي بنوا نفس العمود ونفس ال الورقات اللي هي بترفرف في في الريح دي في فوق أعمدة كنيسة نوتردام. Yes, go ahead, Diana. So these are some examples in Europe of Saint Simeon. As I said, his, he was, his basilica was very famous. He was the most famous one in all of Christianity. And so on the on the left here. We have St. Simeon standing on his pillar uh, in a stained glass window in a church and, and a village called St. Simeon. Even the village is named after him um, to the east of Paris. And on the right hand side, we have St. Simeon on top of his pillar in mosaics in St. Mark's, in St. Mark's Basilica in Venice. Uh, which which uh, basilica, please? In Venice? St. Mark's, St. Mark's Denmark. basilica. Okay. In, in, okay. In Venice, yes. Okay. 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 من طرف الدكتور ناصر جاسم من العراق سمعان العمودي اوكي طيب هو انا طيب انا انا اقدر جدا طبعا التعريف بس انا هو الحروف سن سينيان فانا مش عارفه سمعان دي في ميم ف لان هم كلهم بيقفوا على اعمده على فكره بس طبعا انا اقدر جدا مداخلته هو زي ما شرحهم هي لا زي ما شرحت هو بيقف على عمود ويبدو ان ان التقليد ده تاخد فبقى موجود فيما بعد على طول وبتقول ان حتى القريه اللي فيها هذه البازيليكا اتسمت على اسمه واللي على اليمين هو فسيفساء مصنوعه برضو تبين شكل القديس ده وهو فوق تاج العمود وهي معموله من الفسيفساء في في كنيسه سانت مارك بفينيسيا. Go ahead, Diana. So this is everything so far has been to explain, if you like, the Christian inheritance, the the foundation, the Christian foundations, uh, which were already there when the Umayyads, the first uh, Islamic dynasty. Uh, came to power into Syria and made uh, Damascus its capital. So uh, when the Umayyads came into, into the region, 
the first monumental building that they that they uh, erected was the Dome of the Rock. Abdul Malik uh, was the Umayyad Caliph who built um, the Dome of the Rock in in Jerusalem, and uh, a lot of art historians say, oh yes, but it's just a Byzantine building. You know, they just copied everything. It's it's octagonal, and you know the dome. It, it's all it's all just a copy of a Byzantine building. And it's true, of course, that uh, on one level you could say this. It has certainly copied, uh, adopted the octagonal shape from the early Christian. Uh, this is always a holy shape um, in, in early, um, especially tombs um, of saints, the octagonal shape. And uh, so to that extent, it's true. But I will show you in the next slide how in this building, the Dome of the Rock, there are two things which are completely different to Byzantine architecture. Also here on the outside, just to comment, the thing that's very different to Byzantine architecture is here in the Dome of the Rock, the mosaics and the inscription are on the outside of the building. It's, it's a declaration, it's a statement. It's designed to, to, to say something where um, Byzantine uh, sacred buildings, all the decoration, the mosaic is on the inside. And on the outside, it's very, very plain. So this is one big difference from the outside. And in the next slide, I'll show you two big differences on the inside. Okay. بالنسبة لل لل للورث أو الميراث ال ال المسيحي كان بيقال إن هذا ال ال الصرح اللي هو the dome of the rock أو قبة الصخرة اللي بناه عبد الملك إن هو بنيه متأثر بال بال بالبناء أو بالعمارة البيزنطية وده هذا الطرح كان نتيجة إن أصلا هذه القبة على بترتكز على مثمن أو شكل ثماني والشكل الثماني ده بيعتبر من الأشكال المقدسة فعشان كده يعني عملوا ترجيح لإن هو ده يكون من التأثر بال طراز البيزنطي أو العمارة البيزنطية ولكن في اختلافات جوهرية داخلية وخارجية ما بين هذا المبنى وما بين الطرح البيزنطي في العمارة بتاعتهم وأول حاجة بنلاحظها في الشكل اللي قدامنا هي الزخرفة اللي على الحوائط والكتابات الكثيرة جدا عادة أي مبنى بيزنطي ديني يعني بيكون أي زخرفة في داخلية مش خارجية فده ده اللي هي بتقوله وكمان في السلايد اللي بعد كده هتشرح نقطتين يختلف فيهم تماما هذا الصرح عن الطراز البيزنطي اللي قيل إنه بيقابل yes go ahead Dan. So this is now um, a cross section of the Dome of the Rock so that you can see inside. And if you see um, at the bottom, the bottom row of arches, uh, you will see that the two ones on the outside are pointed. And this is the first time that we start to see a pointed arch in um, Omea architecture. In, there was never a pointed arch in Byzantine architecture. Byzantine architecture was always a round Roman arch, like the two arches there in the center. But if you look at the two on the outside, like the four running across the bottom there, the, the two on the outside are both pointed. So that's the first thing that's completely different to a Byzantine building. And then up um, under the dome, you'll see a row of little, a little arcade of tiny trefoil arches. This is little, um, you know, little, a little shape like three little uh, leaves, if you like, uh, sort of three little lobes. Uh, and again, this is the first time this occurs in Arcad architecture, and it never appears anywhere in Byzantine architecture. 
arts. And of course, the trefoil arch and the pointed arch go on to become extremely important in later Gothic architecture. So here in the Dome of the Rock, very discreetly, are the beginnings of the way in which Islamic art started to differ from Byzantine architecture. Okay. Um, okay, now uh, Diana is giving a lot, a lot of information and I have to just uh, 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 gather all that or try to sum it up. So please forgive me if I, if I just uh, uh, miss on something. Uh, what she said was, if you look at the lower part of this cross section, بالعربي <تصفيق> 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 <تصفيق>
المناره زي ما احنا شايفين انها تشبه برج الاجراس في الكنائس وحتى اسمها مناره عيسى او سيدنا عيسى ويقال ان ان سيدنا عيسى لما هينزل الى الدنيا او هيبعث هيبقى هينزل من عند هذه المناره فهي عددت عده حاجات في هذا المسجد الاموي اللي هي بنتاخدها من العماره البيزنطيه yes you can go ahead diana so this is the inside courtyard of the mayad mosque where you can see the mosaics which again continue i mean the, the craftsmanship is christian byzantine this was their speciality the mosaics but now the subject matter is islamic so what what here for the first time in the mosaics we have visions of paradise we have gardens and trees and rivers and fantasized um, palaces uh, and again you see the three windows this is directly from the churches all across syria would have had three windows like this to represent the trinity in christianity and but here we have the hellenistic pillars dividing them taken from the roman and hellenistic sites and again blended into something new so again the same idea of taking the old elements and blending it into something new now in these visions of paradise in the mosaics الخطه اللي احنا شايفينها هي بتظهر حد سامعني اوكي آه بالنسبه للفناء الداخلي في المسجد الاموي فبتقول بتلفت النظر للفسيفساء اللي فيه اللي هي بتشاور عليها باللون بالسهم الاصفر فبتقول هي وان كان هي فيها كثير من من التاثر بالمسيحيه الا انها يعني فيها حاج فيها عناصر كثير قوي سواء كانت تتعلق بالخضره او بال بتصورات الجنة هتكون ازاي الحاجة اللي لفتت النظر ليها ان لو لاحظتوا في ثلاثة نوافذ هي بتشاور عليهم هنا بتقول النوافذ دي برضو من الحاجات اللي متخدة من المسيحية لانها تمثل الثالوث ودي حاجة في الديانة المسيحية بس يعني بشكل كامل في دمج ما بين القديم والجديد بين ما سبق في من من ديانات وما بين محاوله اخذ ما يصلح منه لهذه الـ الـ اللي ما يعني اللي يصلح لانه يكون في مسجد يس يو كان جو اهيد نو سو ذس از ذا دمسكس انترنس تو ذا ناشونال ميوزيوم So this is still in Damascus now, and it is the entrance, it is the reconstructed entrance of an Umayyad palace, so a secular building, not a religious building. Uh, it's one of the desert palaces, it's Qasr al-Khair al-Gharbi, and it has been brought from the desert and re recreated here back in the 1930s. and you can see the style here of the two the twin towers here they are rounded instead of square the twin towers flanking a monumental entrance so this has has carried into um umayyad architecture from the original early christian architecture except that uh the umayyads have now started to make the temp the towers round rather than rectangular
uh, I keep on on muting. On, I, I don't know. Or maybe the admins try to mute the voice. Anyway, the entrance to the Mosque is the entrance to the Mosque. وهو منقول عن قصر كان اسمه قصر الخير العربي الغربي الغربي الخير الغربي قصر الخير دكتور اوكي قصر الخير و الخير الخير بالحاء بالهاء بالحاء 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 الحير اوكي اوكي الحير يس القصر الحير وهو جيء به من الصحراء ليعاد تمثيله في هذا المتحف ونلاحظ ان برضو وجود المدخل بين برجين وده تأثر بالعمارة المسيحية القديمة في سوريا الحاجة اللي تفترق هنا ان البرجين صاروا دائريين القطاع او المسقط دائري المسقط زي ما احنا شايفين او اسطواني يعني ومش مش فلات او مش مستقيم زي زي البرج اللي احنا شفناه في الاول لا لا احد اول الكنائس المسيحيه في سوريا تفضلي جو هيد داينا اند ذس از اولسو ان اميد بالاس ا ديتيل فروم قصر مشطا ويتش از ان ذا ميوزيوم اوف اسلاميك ارت ان برلين So this is one you can go to visit in Berlin and get really close to it to see the quality of the stonemasonry here. Again, the same limestone uh, detailed carving, very typical Umayyad carving here. And always it's the same idea of nature uh, completely sort of bursting with energy, bursting with life almost, you know, flowers and vines and uh, animals, everything um, full of life and um, energy. And this is this was very typical Umayyad style, that everything was very heavily decorated. Yeah. Uh, uh, this, the, can you repeat the name of the castle, please? Yes, Qasr Mushatta, it's called. It's the Winter Palace, you know, Mushatta. From the winter. Ah, Mushatta. Okay, okay. Okay, so this is the castle of Mushatta in Berlin. And this part is the part of Berlin that we see. And it's very important to see it in the hands of Syria. And this is the... حاجة التقليدية اللي احنا أدركنا الحين انهم لما بينحتوا الحجر بيبقى بينحتوه بدقة جدا وبيعملوا زخارف نباتية وحيوانية زي ما احنا شايفين آه وهي مليئة بالحياة آه آه والزخارف مش بتكون آه يعني واسعة لا ده بتكون كثيفة جدا في الحاجة اللي بيعملوها آه yeah. uh, go ahead please and In a, in a different Umayyad palace now, this one is um, it's called Khirbat al-Mafjar. It's near Jericho in what is today the occupied West Bank. And it is the earliest example of a, becomes later the rose window in Gothic architecture. It's a decorated ornamental window which had colored glass in it. The, the, Um, the excavators, the archaeologists, found fragments of colored glass beneath it, and it was its position was high up in the audience chamber of the caliph in in his um, in his palace. And so, of course, centuries later, uh, you know, we we reach the absolute apogee of rose windows, as in Chartres Cathedral. Here on on the right hand side, which it takes many 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 centuries, you know, seven eight centuries to develop into something much much more sophisticated. But the very earliest example of an ornamental window designed to let in uh, light, colored light in a special way, is is uh, is in this Khirbat al Mafjar Umayyad Palace near Jericho. Uh, 
جيريكو اللي هي معلش ساعدوني الضفة الغربية دكتورة الضفة الغربية اوكي طيب هذا اللقطة اللي هي على اليسار أريحة I think is it is it in أريحة أريحة نعم يس 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 أريحة بالضبط شكرا شكرا اللقطة اللي على اليسار اللي هي في 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 قصر أموي في في أريحة واضح جدا فيها ما يسمى بالنافذة اللي على شكل زهرة وهي سداسية الشكل والحفر برضو لازال دقيق جدا وإن كان لأول مرة أنا بشوف الحفر هنا نافذ تماما فشايفة في دقة وجمال جميل جدا مهم ده ده رأيي بس مش مش قصدي هي قالت كده هنتنقل للقطة اللي على اليمين بتبين كان يو بليز تيل مي اجين وات يير از ذا ذا رايت هاند سايد بيكتشر وات يير ذيس از شارتر كاثيدرال سو ذيس از ذيس از ذا 12th سنتشري ليت 12th سنتشري يو كول ات شارتر شارتر كاثيدرال ان فرانس يس يس ساوث اوف باريس Yeah, well, uh, West, I wish yeah. the names were written because actually yes. uh, my yes. mic is, is not... Uh... Right, yes, yes, no. Yes, Chartres okay. is, is the most famous cathedral for stained glass and its rose okay. windows are the most famous in Europe. Mm. That's fa why fa I chose it. Yes, this. sure, yeah. sure. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ilham, for writing the name. Uh, so, بالنسبة للقطة اللي على اليمين فهي من كنيسة أو كاتدرائية اسمها شارتر في فرنسا وده من القرن ال 12 وزي ما احنا شايفين ان في تطور كبير جدا في استخدام النوافذ اللي هي على شكل زهرة بعد ما كان هنا عندنا سداسية بقت هنا عندنا 12 فص في هذه الزهرة وده من الإزاز المعشة. Yes, go ahead, Diana, please. So that is the Umayyads in Syria. So now, of course, the, the, the Umayyads come to an end in, in the year 750 when the Abbasids come to power and uh, kill all the Umayyad uh, royal family except for one Umayyad prince, Abdurrahman, who manages to escape and make his way across through Egypt, all across North Africa, into Spain. And he establishes the Umayyad dynasty in Spain, which, uh, and his capital of Cordoba is modeled on Damascus. He is trying, like all exiles, he tries to recreate his homeland of Syria in his new country in, in Spain. And so um, the aerial view here, you can see that it has been altered many times over the centuries, but essentially the main element is, uh, is modeled on the Damascus Umayyad Mosque. طيب بالنسبة للعصر الأموي انتهى بقتل معظم الأمراء أو القائمين على هذا العصر في سنة 750 ميلادية وبعد ما العباسيين وصلوا للسلطة وبقى في العصر العباسي إلا أمير واحد فلت وده راح هرب عن طريق مصر لغاية ما وصل إلى أسبانيا وكأي في كل الأحوال بتحصل إن لما يكون شخص ذو نفوذ بيروح يستوطن مكان آخر ويكون معاه قوة كافية بيحاول بيحاول إن هو يبني أو يعيد بناء شيء من بلده اللي بتبقى حبيبه على نفسه في في البلد اللي هو بيستوطنها عن جديد فهو عمل كده بالظبط ان هو بنى في في قرطبه اللي اعتبر هي المدينه اللي راح ليها بقت هي مدينته 
بنى فيها مسجد قرطبة اللي هو تطور على كذا عصر زي ما اكيد هتشرح بعد كده ان مسجد قرطبة اول ما اتبنى ما كانش كده بالظبط كان كان حاجة تانية وبعدين اللي احنا اللقطة اللي احنا شايفينها دي مع تطور الصين فبنى مسجد قرطبة ده شبيه جدا بالمسجد الاموي في دمشق go ahead دعينا And so here is the, uh, the, the original minaret of the uh, Cordoba Mosque, uh, which rises up in registers, getting smaller and more decorated as it reaches the top. Of course, today, this is now the bell tower of the cathedral, because, of course, in the Reconquista of Spain, uh, the Cordoba uh, Mosque was turned into a cathedral. اللي احنا شايفينها دي هي المناره بتاعت مسجد قرطبه اللي تحولت ل لبرج اجراس لان احنا زي ما احنا عارفين ان مسجد قرطبه مع الزمن تحول لكاتدرائيه يا yeah. inside the Cordoba now again we see some very important new innovations So this is the ribbed vault, one of the earliest ribbed vaults, and it's directly above, it's above the dome, which is directly above uh, the mihrab in the Cordova Mosque. And when this, uh, this vault, this ribbed vault, was examined by structural engineers, just recently, in 2017, They were astonished at the geometric perfection of this vault, and they said it was a masterpiece of geometry, and it has never needed structural repair in its entire thousand years. في داخل مسجد قرطبة إبداعات يعني متعددة زي ما إحنا شايفين. واحد من هذه الابداعات هي القبه ذات الاعصاب او القبه اللي متشاله على اعصاب زي زي ما احنا شايفين في اللقطه الغريب في هذا كمان انه ان كتير من المهندسين الانشائيين المعاصرين عملوا اختبار لهذه القبه ولقوا ان هي يعني ما فيهاش غلطة إنشائية و و وإنها يعني كانوا مبهورين جدا بيها ومن الحاجات اللي تذكر إن هذه القبة لم يحدث لها أي تلف إنشائي منذ أن أنشئت وده معناها إن هي يعني سليمة إنشائيا 100% اتفضلي دايانا So at the back wall of the Cordoba Mesquita In one of the excavations, they discovered the mason marks. So these are the names of the masons who worked on the building. And when you look at the names, they are overwhelmingly Arab names so, and written in Arabic script. So it shows that the masons working, the craftsmen working on the stone of the building in Cordoba were overwhelmingly Muslim. There were a few, a few Christians amongst them, but the vast majority were Muslims. The lines that we see here are the lines with the names of the people who worked in building of this amazing temple in Cordoba. And if you noticed and looked at these lines that are written on the names, you will find that a large number of them مكتوب باللغة العربية وده معناها ان معظم البنائين اللي كانوا اشتركوا في بناء مسجد قرطبة هم من العرب صحيح موجود بعض المسيحيين بس الاغلبية العظمى من العرب Yes, go ahead and, and this is now the, the mihrab of the Cordoban um, and again you can see the trefoil arches the row there, the seven Trefoil arches now are occurring here in the mihrab, the most important part of the mosque. So they are used um, in a very uh, 
special, you know, sacred significance, if you like, um, in this row, this arcade again of um, trefoil arches. And of course, this is this is now, you know, much earlier, at least sort of a century or two earlier than the first trefoil arches occur in um, in in uh, in Gothic architecture. And this is the first time the trefoil arch occurs on European soil. So this is the first time it's made it now across um, across in onto European soil. Um, لو ده محراب مسجد قرطبة ولو تلاحظوا فوقه فيه سبع عقود كلها ذات فصوص ثلاثية وده أول مرة كان يأتي لأوروبا وهو سبق استخدام هذا العقد الثلاثي الفصوص بما يقرب من 200 أو 300 سنة قبل أن يأتي مثيل له في أوروبا فاللي حصل في مسجد قرطبة سبق أي مثل آخر في هذا في هذه العقود اللي احنا شايفينها اللي هي ثلاثية الفصوص ب 200 أو 300 سنة قبل استخدامه في أي حاجة قوطية شكرا yes, go ahead, and so this is now the interior of the Cordoba Mosque, and we can see the um, the completely uh, new kind of design inside with these double arches and the 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 alternating color of red and white. This was the colors of the um, of Abdurrahman's caliphate uh, was red and white. These were his colors. And so the mosque, when you enter it, it's very different to any kind of church because there's no beginning and no end. When you enter it, it's like some web of uh, spatial infinity. There's no, not like in a church where you have, you know, the important part at the front and the altar and, and then the important people stand at the front and, and everything goes backwards down to the, the poor people at the back. In, in the mosque now, it is a completely different concept of sacred space where everything is like a web. As I said, you don't know the beginning or the end. You don't know where the important part is or that there is no sense of that. And arches are everywhere. So on the right-hand side there, this is the outside wall of the mesquita. And you'll see arches everywhere, the trefoil arches. There's every kind of arch you can imagine is, is occurring on the uh, on the outside of the of the Cordoba Mesquita. Yeah. Okay. Um بالنسبة للقطة اللي احنا شايفينها على اليسار هي لداخل مسجد قرطبة. وزي ما احنا شايفين ان فيها عقود مختلفة ومتدخلة كمان فيها استخدام اللون الاحمر والابيض اللي هي الوان تمثل الامير عبد الرحمن من الملاحظ ايضا ان في الحيز ده في, الـ في, الـ في الـ هذا الـ المكان الـ الـ الواسع في المسجد إن ما فيش ما فيش شعور بالبداية والنهاية أو في إن في مكان أهم من الآخر زي في في الكنائس بيكون في في المقدمة شيء وفي الخلفية مثلا ممكن يبقى شيء آخر إنما هنا الحيز كله ما فيش برايورتي أو ما فيش أولوية أو ما فيش مكان أهم من آخر كله كأنه شبكة عنكبوتية كبيرة ليس لها بداية وليس لها نهاية في في الجزء في اللقطة اللي هي بتبين المسجد قرطبة من الخارج يلاحظ ان في استخدام لعدة انواع من العقود في في لقطة واحدة يعني شايفين عقود ثلاثية الفصوص وعقود خماسية الفصوص وعقود شكل حدوة الحصان وعقود مربع أو مستقيمة وهكذا فهي بتلفت النظر لاستخدام 
عقود متعدده الاشكال في في الواجهه الخارجيه جو هيد دايانا and and so here again this is the on the right hand side is the outside wall of the sort of a mosquito you can see the interlocking pointed arches um, and the horseshoe arch below and then on the left hand side you can see the same style of the interlocking pointed arches which occurs now in England in Durham Cathedral uh, for the first time, very early, before Gothic. So, so the Normans, you know, in France um, took the style uh, to England when they came after 1066 and conquered England, they brought this, uh, this style to England for the first time. And it, uh, it occurs then in Durham Cathedral. And this is in what they call the Galilee Chapel in Durham. The Galilee what? Ga the Galilee Chapel. Yeah. Okay. في اللقطات اللي احنا شايفينها دلوقتي بنقدر نشوف على الواجهات بتاعة مسجد قرطبة على على اليمين في شكل العقود المتداخلة و ونقدر نلقط ازاي تكونت العقود المخموسه من خلال العقود الدائريه المتداخله في اللقطه الاخرى برضو بتظهر العقود المخموسه واللي اتى بيها لاول مره النورمانيين من فرنسا في سنه 1066 يعني 1066 واستخدموها في في كاتدرائيه درام وفي جلالي تشافل از ذات جلالي تشافل يا جلالي ذا سي يو نو فروم ذا سي اوف جلالي ذات ذس از ذا ذا هولي لاند از ذي ذي وود ثينك اوف ات يو نو اني واي سو سو ذس از ان ان سايد ستيل ان سايد ذا ذا كوردوبا مسكيتا so as I mentioned, it's turned into a cathedral now. So you have crucifixes, but the I wanted to show you how the arches now you get instead of the the tree foil, you get the sank foil with um, with five lobes now beginning. It becomes more and more elaborate with these um, many many arches. بتقول دي لقطة داخلية ومن الملاحظ ان بما انها تحولت لكاتدرائية مسجد قرطبة صار كاتدرائية فبقى في تعليق للصلبان اللي عليها المسيح مصلوب في عدة اماكن زي ما احنا شايفين واتت تحت عقد خماسي الفصوص آه وشايفين قد ايه الـ الـ مع التطوير كان المسجد في الاول آه بدات الـ الـ العقود تاخد شكل يعني اكثر تفصيلا واكثر آه 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 يعني فنا او اكثر آه آه تفاصيل ادق يعني معلش آه هذا ما يحضرني بصراحه Okay. okay, and this is also in Cordova, but this is now the synagogue in in Cordova for the Jews, and you'll see how the Jews in Cordova also adopted these Islamic designs because they, uh, as you know, in in Cordova before the Reconquista, the the Jews were also, um, you know, a very respected part of society and so they adopted um, the same things these multi-foil arches they're called this one you know is one two three four five six seven seven lobes in the arch and the same very detailed um, uh, ornament decoration yes yeah. in the synagogue the Ma'bad Yehudi وبتقول يلاحظ استخدام برضو العقود ذات الفصوص وهنا استخدموا عقد ذو سبع فصوص زي ما احنا شايفين وبرضو بتلفت النظر لدقة الزخرف اللي على الحوائط في هذا المعبد اليهودي وبتلفت النظر كمان ان اليهود كيان يعني يحترم هناك what is the date of this synagogue, please? 
it's it's the same bit as as the mosque, so it's okay. um, it's yeah, it's it's uh, okay. What? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, early 8th century, early 8th century, yes. Okay, the Ma'abad that we saw, 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 the Ma'abad that we it, it is later, it is not uh, eight, eight uh, okay. Okay. Right, uh, so so now we're moving on to the other, so, so this was, um, you know, Spain, if you like, uh, Syria in Spain, if you like to put it that way, the Umayyads in Spain. Uh, now I'm going to look at other gateways into Europe uh, through which other elements came. So this one, the pointed arch, the first time the pointed arch seems to have come into Europe was through Amalfi, the trading uh, port of Amalfi on the Italian coast. And the they were trading, the Amalfi merchants were trading with, um, with Egypt, with Alexandria, and the on the right hand side we have the Ibn Tulun mosque in Cairo and the merchants uh, liked the shape of these arches and so when they rebuilt their cathedral in Amalfi they, they brought um, craftsmen and redesigned their cathedral with pointed arches for the first time um, and then this this was the beginning and because it was a very important trading center, this is around the year 1000, and this was when Amalfi was at its height in its, tra in its trading uh, with the Eastern Mediterranean. But then, very importantly, a Benedictine abbot came to visit Amalfi to buy um, luxury goods, and he noticed the pointed arch there and decided he wanted it in his abbey at Monte Cassino in in um, in Italy, and then after Monte Cassino adopted the pointed arch, then the, the abbot from Cluny, Cluny is the capital, if you like, the headquarters of the Benedictines, who were the most powerful um, group of, uh, um, of of Christians in in the whole of Europe at that time. So when when we uh, the abbot at Cluny adopted the pointed arch, that was when everything changed. That's when the fashion, if you like, suddenly was set. And suddenly all, all religious buildings, all cathedrals suddenly wanted the pointed arch. Okay. Okay. I wished I had what you're saying on cards because it's, it's overwhelming, Diana. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to simplify it, but it is complicated. Yeah, because it's, uh, doing, it's a lot of, uh, it's very a lot of information, fun. and I, I like yeah. to to pass everything to to the others, but yeah. uh, I can't. I can't. Anyway, he uh, can't be talking about the Tugar, who are from Amalfi. His name is Tugar Amalfi. And how they when they visited the Mosque of Ibn Tulun in Cairo, in Egypt. أعجبوا جدا بالعقود المخموسة اللي هي مدببة زي ما احنا شايفينها في ال تبات زكي بلحت اوكي بالعقود اللي هي مدببة او المخموسة اللي احنا شايفينها على اليمين وحبوا جدا انهم ينقلوها لل... لل... للكاتدرائيات اللي هم بيبنوها في ايطاليا آه، ما تنسوش اسم التجار اللي جايين من أمالفي وده كان سنة ألف لما, لما نقلوا هذا العقود اللي هي من مسجد ابن طولون بعد كده جت آه، 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 تم بناء الآبي اللي في مونت كاسينو في إيطاليا وبعديها الأبط أوف كلوني آه، آه، ودي كانت المقر الرئيسي ل... ل... يعني المقر ال... الرئيسي ل... ل... ليها يعني صرح هام جدا مسيحي في ال... في اوروبا وده كانت اول مكان تنطلق منه اذا جاز ان احنا نسميها 
الموضه بتاعه العقود المخموسه القوطيه وظلت منذ هذا التاريخ الى اليوم تفضلي دينا recorded it it's written down in in the church's own history archives so this is how we know how it happened thank you very much بتقول السبب في معرفتنا بهذه المعلومات ان في كل كنيسه من هذه الكنائس المعلومات دي مدونه ومكتوبه في 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 الاركايفز بتاعه هذه في يعني في 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 خزانه او في في المكان اللي بيحفظوا فيه المخطوطات في هذه الكنايس فده بالظبط فده اللي خلاهم يعرفوا كل هذه المعلومات so so now now that cluny now that the benedictines have the pointed arch and are starting to adopt these eastern and um, islamic styles um the benedictines at cluny they are in charge of the the pilgrimage route to Santiago de Compostela in northern Spain and so they build um uh cathedrals along the route for pilgrims to stop at on the route to Santiago de Compostela and they start to 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 show in these buildings um the beginnings of some islamic styles so on the right hand side there this is le puy cathedral in france where you see the alternating black and white in the arches there are some Turkic inscriptions in this cathedral because the benedictines copied arabic script thinking it was holy script because they saw it in jerusalem and they thought it was the language of christ so they just copied it thinking it was um holy writing um and these the idea of these cloisters also um in amalfi on the right hand side there we have the cloister of paradise where again these islamic uh, slender columns um appear um and and are then uh, start to become uh, copied okay can you please tell me again that those on the left hand side is where the left is in amalfi amalfi the same okay. place before the the italian uh, trading city it's called the cloister of paradise it's next door to the cathedral yeah and the the the, the one on the uh, uh, right the one, hand side the one on the right is in france le puy cathedral le puy it's p le and then p u y le puy okay. in central in central okay. france on the route on on the pilgrimage route to santiago de compostela اوكي اوكي ا اللقطه اللي على اليسار هي في في ايطاليا في برضو امال في بجانب ال ال بجانب الكلوستر اوف يو سيد كلوستر اوف وات بارادايس بارادايس اوكي اوكي بالنسبه لللقطه اللي على اليمين فهي من كاتدرائيه اسمها لوبوي في فرنسا وده على الطريق لسانتياغو دي كونستيلا يا وملاحظ انها اخذت عناصر كتير قوي من من العماره الاسلاميه وهي ذكرت ان بعض الزخارف اتخذت على انها اتخذت بدون فهمها على انها كتابات مقدسه عشان يزخرفوا بيها الوجهات هو انا بصراحه حاولت ابص قوي بس انا مش لقطاها بس هي ذكرت انهم اخذوها كما هي وحطوها على انها زخارف مقدسه يا جو هيد ناو ذس از انذر جيت واي سو ذات ذات واز امالفي as the gateway to Italy now we have the gateway in Sicily which is another very important gateway into Europe uh where because the normans the french normans um conquered Sicily and adopted the arab styles so their king Roger the 2nd he adopted the arab styles and they you, you have this kind of hybrid style which is called even today arab norman architecture so 
the, the pictures here are from the Capella Palatina, which is the royal palace of Roger II. And, and on the left, you can again see the blending. So you have the Fatimid arches, and it's known that Roger II um, brought craftsmen over from Egypt. Um, and, and the mosaics are done by, by Christians, and the arches are done by Muslim um, workers. And on the, on the right-hand side is a detail of the ceiling, which is made of wood in uh, Mokanias uh, designs. With, uh, and, and again, we know that the craftsmen were brought over from Egypt to do this, because locally, locally, in Europe, there were no craftsmen who could do this kind of work. OK. Uh, it, uh, now, in what I, you mentioned something at the very beginning about Amalfi. Uh, is that yes, the, that, uh, that was that was that that was the previous gateway. So, okay. so no, no, far, okay. so far, we have Spain, we have Amalfi, and now this is Sicily. Sicily, as, right? As okay. So, we are seeing this in the Sicilian, and and the one is Roger the second, and this is this الستايل وكل تفاصيله من مصر وبنى حاجه اسمها كابيلا بالاتينا وده القصر ده القصر بتاعه هو شخصيا والزخارف واضح انها متاثره جدا بالزخارف الاسلاميه وان كان فيها بعض صور للقديسين زي ما احنا شايفين على ايدنا الشمال بس لابد من ذكر ان الفسيفساء اللي عملوه مسيحيين مهرة حرفيين مسيحيين مهرة أما العقود فاللي عملوها مسلمين والأسقف اللي احنا شايفين فيها بعض المقرنصات فبرضو عملوها مسلمين لأن ما كانش فيه حد في أوروبا يقدر يعمل ده and then also in Sicily in Palermo and also the, the Capella Palatina in the last um, slide was also in Palermo, of course. So also in Palermo, we have this um, uh, castle, if you like, a sort of hunting lodge. Uh, it's called Laziza, which is meant to be a corruption of Al Aziz, the, you know, the magnificent. Um, and it again, it shows this um, unusual blending of Arab and Norman design. And uh, I'll explain then in the next slide. So this is just a general view of, of, of the, the, the castle. So this is now secular architecture, not religious. Uh, this is where? Where is, where is this, it? This is Sicily again in Palermo. Okay. okay. بتقول إن ده عبارة عن بيت يعني للصيد بيروحوا مش للسكن الدائم إنما لما يكونوا في رحلات صيد أو في هانتينج بيروحوا يسكنوا في هذا البيت وده في برضو في سقلية والأعتقد لنفس الأمير أو الشخص وهو ده يعتبر بناء ما هوش ديني يعني ومع ذلك احنا بنشوف في بعض بعض العناصر اللي انا شايفه انها بسيطه جدا اللي مستوحاه من العماره الاسلاميه so this is now the inside of uh, laziza as they call it and this is the um, the main hall they call it the fountain hall so on on the left there it, this is the the Arab Norman in, in Palermo, the Fountain Hall, and you can see the mosaics there. So you can see the Makarnas in the arch, the mosaics, which show scenes of hunting. And then underneath that, you have a fountain running down um, into the marble floor. And this is the model which um, Lord Leighton in London moving and now you know he copied this design in the 19th century um in in his he called it the arab hall in uh 
in London. It's it's in Leighton House in London, and he he brought everything he could from the Arab world. He brought tiles from Damascus. He 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 brought um, all the elements together in this um, Arab hall, except, of course, he couldn't make the mukarnas. Um, there was no craftsman who could possibly make the mukarnas, even in the 19th century. And so if you see in the corners of, of his room there, in the black and white image, there's just a, a, a sort of shape, you know, a, like a, a hollow shape, but no actual mukarnas in it. This is Lord, what's the name again? Leighton, Leighton. Leighton. Lord, Lord Leighton. Okay. Um, okay. Zay ma hna shayfin fi al-lakta la hiya ala al-yasar. Bardo la zilna fi dakhil al-bit la huwa Hunting Lodge. Fi l-ismu Laziza. Wa shayfin ihna ما يشبه المحراب وفوقيه مقرنصات رائعة ده من داخل البيت البيت اللي احنا كنا لسه بنقول بندور على معالم طراز إسلامي من الخارج هو من الداخل فيه ده اللي هو فعلا بيؤكد انه طراز إسلامي بالمقرنصات اللي فيه اللقطة إلا على اليمين ده كان فيه لورد اسمه لورد ليتن فحب يعمل أعجب جدا بالهانتنج لودج اللي احنا شايفينه ده فحب يعمل ده وعمله فعلا وسماها في البيت بتاعه لاتن هول وجاب كل المحتويات اللي احنا شايفينها في اللقطة اللي هي بالأبيض والأسود من البلاد العربية زي البلاطات من دمشق البنايين من او اللي بيعملوا معظم اللي بيعملوا الشغل من من العرب المسلمين يعني الا المقرنصات ما عرفش يلاقي حد يعملها في الوقت اللي هو كان بيعمل فيه ده فزي ما انتم شايفين في جزء فوق جنب العقد المخموس ده شكله مقرنص بس ما كانش ما كانش يعني ما كانش معمول بكفاءه اللي احنا شايفينه في في بيت الصيد اللي هو اللي اسمه لذيذة اللي هو على اليسار. Yeah. فضلي. So so now in, in Europe, what happens now? Um, now that um, we're at the beginnings of, um, of of Gothic architecture, and what happens now is in images like this one, which is in the front of a French Bible, you have images of God. As the the geometer with his compass there creating the world, so suddenly the, the compass, the idea of God creating the world with a compass and geometry, um, enters uh, Christian iconography for the first time. Which again is can only be because the importance of geometry is suddenly uh, has come to the to the European um, attention. اوكي اللقطة اللي احنا شايفينها بتمثل آآ آآ الرب في المسيحية وكأنه ماسك فرجار أو أو برجل بيبتدي يهندس بيه الكون وده بيدل على الاهتمام اللي حدث إثر إنهم شافوا إن ال إن الفنون والعمارة الإسلامية ركزت جامد قوي على على النواحي الهندسية فحبوا يظهروا هذا الاهتمام بهذه اللقطة إن 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 ربنا أصلا مهندس الكون يعني. Yeah, تفضلي. So so now just quickly to touch on some military architecture because again uh, this is the time now obviously when the Crusades have begun. And the Norman knights are going. Uh, the French Norman knights are uh, are going to, to the Holy Land. And Richard the Lionheart comes back from the Third Crusade, and he um, uses he uses all the styles that he learns from the um, Arab military architecture that he sees there, and he builds this famous castle, Chateau Gaillard. Which is between Paris and Rouen, on the River Seine, there overlooking the Seine, and it's this round shape because this is more effective 
at deflecting the cannonballs. You know, the, 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 the European ones have tended to be rectangular and flat, but so he learns that it's more effective to be, to be round. And this becomes his favorite castle. He, he, he spends the last two years of his life in this castle. Okay. Um, فيه uh, uh, ال... ريتشارد قلب الأسد اللي هو شن الحرب الصليبية الثالثة بنى هذا اللي يسمى شاتو أو يعني زي قصر صغير بهذا الشكل على نهر السين في فرنسا وهو لاحظ أن هذا الشكل يقدر يحمي القصر أو الإطار اللي احنا شايفينه حوالين القصر أو الحوائط دي بتقدر تحمي من الـ من الـ من العدوان بالأسلحة المتاحة كانت ساعتها فبناها بها... حسن دكتورة نعم حسن. هو حسن, حسن. 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 أوكي. أوكي. آه بس ف... ف... وهكذا هو آه آه بنى هذا الحصن آه آه على نهر السين Uh, go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is now. So so now we're entering um, the time when, obviously, the, the Crusaders have have conquered Jerusalem, and um, many pilgrims start to go. Christian pilgrims start to go to Jerusalem, and they start to produce maps. This is and this is the very first pictorial map of Jerusalem that comes back to Europe with a pilgrim. And it gets printed many, many times in in the um, in the uh, in the 1500s. Um, and the remarkable thing about it, of course, is that at the center of the map is the Dome of the Rock. The the a Muslim shrine is at the center of Christian Jerusalem. And the reason for this is that um, the Crusaders mistook the Dome of the Rock for the Temple of Solomon. So you have the Templars, as they're called, you know, the Christian uh, Norman Knights, who adopt, um, they call themselves the Templars after the Temple of Solomon. And they, um, they put the, 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 the Dome of the Rock on their coins. And this uh, becomes a very influential um, building then uh, all across uh, Christian Europe and churches are modeled on this Dome of the Rock, with people not realizing that it was in fact a Muslim shrine. So it's another example of the ignorance of, 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 these, of these eras that um, in the Middle Ages, there were so many misunderstandings, people did not understand fully what, what buildings represented. آه لما الصليبيين بدأوا يرسموا آه لقطات أو خرائط آه تمثل آه آه القدس آه رسموا في, في وسطها آه آه مسجد قبة الصخرة على اعتبار أن ده كيان مسيحي وما كانوش عارفين أن ده كيان آه آه إسلامي وده من جهلهم آه ولدرجة أنهم حتى آه طبعوا آه قبة الصخرة على النقود بتاعتهم المعدنية وده بتديه على اعتبار أن ده بما يعني يظهر مدى الجهل اللي كان عليه الـ 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 الناس أو الصليبيين ساعتها دايانا Now, Chris, this is St. Mark's Basilica in Venice. And Christopher Wren, in his writing, he describes uh, St. Mark's Basilica as a Saracen building because he sees in it all the designs, all the styles that he recognizes as, um, as Gothic, uh, Gothic styles with the domes and the, um, the, the heavily decorated um, pinnacles. Um, So this is just quickly to show you that, that's all. Okay. Da Knesset Saint Mark Venetia, which is Christopher Ryan, 
على انها فيها اخذت عناصر كتير قوي من من العماره اللي هي من السرسنز او السراسنه اللي هو يعني بقصد العرب المسلمين ويلاحظ في تفاصيل كتيره جدا متاخده من من عماره العرب المسلمين according to Christopher Ryan. Yeah. Hmm. So, so now in, in the, um, the Ottomans, this is the Suleymaniye Mosque in, uh, in Istanbul. And uh, of course, this is Sinan, the architect. And Sinan and Christopher Ren were, were um, they were very similar in some ways. It's interesting because they both lived to be 90 years old. They overlapped. They weren't exact contemporaries, but they overlapped um, a little bit. Uh, Sinan was just a little bit um, before Christopher Wren. And they each worked under, um, so Christopher Wren worked under, I think, three or maybe even five different kings or and queens of England. Uh, he lived in very turbulent times. And the same with uh, Sinan served under three different sultans um, but I, I was going to talk about the dome then in the next uh, picture okay بتقول ان ان بالنسبه للقطه اللي قدامنا اللي هي مسجد السليمانيه في في اسطنبول وده اللي عمله المعماري سنان آه وبتقول ان في آه تزامن آه كبير جدا ما بين كريستوفر راين وسنان آه اللي هما الاثنين آه تقريبا جايز سنان آه عاش بعد شويه بس آه بس هما الاثنين عاشوا عمر طويل آه لعمر 90 سنه آه كريستوفر راين خدم خمس ملوك لانجلترا بينما سنان تقريبا خدم آه ثلاث آه سلاطين مختلفه ل في الوقت اللي هو كان بيبني فيه. And then yeah. inside the dome of the Suleymaniye, now on the left-hand side, you can see the, the, the structure of, of the domes there. And then on the right-hand side is the inside of the domes of St. Paul's Cathedral, in, in, um, where, where, as Christopher Wren said, he uses Saracen vaulting. And when he says Saracen, he doesn't, you know, he includes um, everything in Istanbul in that. I mean, it's a very loose term. The word Saracen, you know, was a very loose word. I mean, it just really meant everything Muslim, really. Um, they didn't, it wasn't a great differentiation. Um, but Christopher Wren was very willing to learn, um, although he didn't travel himself to countries like, um, you know, anywhere apart from France. Um, when people returned from countries uh, further afield in, in the Eastern Mediterranean, he always asked to see drawings and asked them lots of questions about it. So he learned a great deal from, from, um, from, uh, from other travelers who had been to these countries. And the similarities in the vaulting are quite striking. Mm -hmm. Okay. The uh, on the Okay. Uh, was it the left one? The left one is Suleimania? The left is Suleimania. Yes. Okay. The Lata al Ala al Yasar هي المسجد السلم السليمانية من الداخل. The Lata al Ala al Yemin هي ال ال كاتدرائية سانت بول. و و العملها العملها كريستوفر راين. و و هو كريستوفر راين متأص واضح تأثير كبير جدا بالعمارة السرسنز اللي هي بتطلق بشكل غير محدد قوي يعني ممكن نتجادل في موضوع سرسنز دي في عصره ايه انتاجهم الى اخره بس هي اصبحت مدلولها عند الاوروبيين اللي هم العرب المسلمين فهو تأثر جدا بهذه العمارة 
وهي زهرة في الـ في الـ في القبة وفي اللقطة اللي احنا شايفينها لكاتدرائية سان بول كريستوفر راين نفسه لم يعني كان محظوظ كفاية لانه يقدر يسافر بنفسه للبلاد العربية المسلمة عشان يتأثر انما هو كان شغوف جدا بالتعلم من الناس اللي سافروا بيقدروا ينقلوا المعلومات لي بدقة جو هيد هنا And just in, in Venice, again, to show you how, how, how Islamic, if you like, Venice is, um, and, and many scholars have studied this, you know, and, and there are many books about this, about all the Islamic influences in Venice. So in the palace here in the middle, you can see the, the, the round, what's called the telephone dial motif. This, this round motif on the facade of the, of the palace is, is, is a direct copy from a Mamluk palace in Cairo. And on the right-hand side is the Doge's palace, where again, there are many Islamic elements that have been, um, that have been adopted in, into the, the Doge's palace, which is again, thought to be modeled on some um, palaces from, from Cairo in terms of its, um, its ground, its layout. في لقطتين اللقطة اللي هي على اليسار هي لاحظوا فيها الشبابيك اللي شكلها زي القرص الدائري اللي فيه أرقام التليفون وده مأخوذ عن أحد القصور أو المملوكية يعني من من العصر المملوكي القصر اللي على اليمين اللي هو دوتشيس بالاس او القصر دوتشيس ده واخد حاجات كتير قوي من اللي شايفينها قدامنا من من العناصر الزخرفيه المعماريه من قصور في القاهره. And then now um, on, on the left hand side we have the cathedral the gothic cathedral on the road to Compostela in Burgos. Uh, this is in the in the uh, uh, this is late this is late Gothic now sort of 14th century um, Gothic and then on the right hand side still in Spain we have the Sagrada Familia which is if you like the, the ultimate Gothic building <laughs> it's of course still unfinished um, the architect Gaudi um, Anthony Gaudi he died um, before the building was finished and Um, it in fact is due to be completed in 2026, which will be 100 years after Gaudi died. And if you look at all the elements in the Sagrada Familia, they combine all these, um, this extreme uh, uh, sort of uh, very decorated, heavily decorated use of arches and, and um, delicate finials, And, and again, this sort of exuberance of, of nature intertwined with everything. And the, the, his, the, the, the Sagrada Familia in, in Barcelona, in Spain, in terms of style, it could almost be called something like um, a sort of Gothic Hispano-Saracenic. It's, it's the most extraordinary blend of all these different elements. And Gaudi himself actually said um, that it represented a fusion, his, his, his cathedral represented a fusion of um, religion, geometry, and nature. Okay. Okay. The last thing on the left is the الكاتدرائية القوطية اللي اسمها بوجس في في وده في القرن الرابع عشر. Um, where did you say this was? The one in on northern the Spain. Northern yeah. Spain. It's on, the, it's on the route to Santiago de Compostela. The, the, the one on the left side. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, فهي في شمال اسبانيا. اللقطة اللي على إدنا اليمين دي كنيسة العائلة المقدسة اللي هي ساجرادا فاميليا وده 
بتقول يعني ده قمة القوطية لأنتوني جاودي اللي هو توفى من مئة سنة وهي الكنيسة لسه ما خلصتش هو طبعا لسه ما خلصتش دي حاجة ريلاتيف لأن أنا أنا زرتها أصلا وهي دايما بيتبني فيها حاجة إضافية فأنا ما أعرفش هو كان ناوي إيه وبس هي لا زال تسمى أنها أندر كونستراكشن أو تحت ال... تحت البناء لم ينتهي والمفروض أنها هتنتهي هينتهي البناء فيها سنة 2026 يعني بعد أربع سنين وأعتقد أن بعد الأربع سنين ده هيبقى هيبقى هو ده اللي فات 100 سنة على وفاة جودي بتقول ان ان لاحظوا ان في هذه الكنيسه هي طبعا اللقطه مش باينه قوي لو في لقطه مقربه جايز تبان اكتر ان هي دمج ما بين الدين والهندسه والطبيعه وده كلمه جودي نفسه ان هو دمج الدين مع الطبيعه مع الهندسه في بناء واحد وفي نفس الوقت بنلاحظ إن إن الطبيعة هنا برضو متدخلة مع الطابع القوطي والطابع الأسباني اللي هو بيتسمى هيسبانيك وفي نفس الوقت مع الطابع بتاع السارسنز. Okay. And this is just a detail of the Sagrada Familia. Thank you. To, to show you um, how, again, how this is nature bursting out in all directions. It, it reminds me of the facade of the Umayyad Palace, that, that Kasr Mushatta back in Berlin that yeah. we, we had at the beginning. This idea of, of nature bursting out with energy everywhere, except that, of course, here, because it's a Christian building, we have people in there instead of animals. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, you you see here that there are details in a very detailed way, and this reminds us of the picture we saw earlier, which had a wall of stone in the middle, which we said was covered with the wind and the wind. اللي هي اللي هي بيد سورية فهي بتقول لاحظوا ان هنا في تأثر كبير جدا بهذه الدقة وبهذه التفاصيل الغزيرة باختلاف ان هنا في ناس لان دي كنيسة مسيحية بينما في في الناحية الأخرى كان في حيوانات كان كان I just make one remark Diana by the way you said you said uh, uh, regarding uh, here there are people because this is a Christian church, while in the other it was animals. Uh, by like Muslims are not really into animals or people in their decoration, and that's why they went to geometry and florals and uh, calligraphy. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Because, okay. Mushatla, because it was not religious, that that yeah. had animals in it. That's why. Yes. It, yeah, yeah. As you say, in the mosque there was the no no animals. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So and now, just quickly, just to finish, these can be very fast because this is just to show the neo-Gothic when when Gothic came back again after the Middle Ages in the 19th century to show how Gothic is everywhere. You know, these days. And so here we have Big Ben, the Houses of Parliament, covered in pointed arches, trefoil arches, in the neo-Gothic style. Okay. I'm going to say that this is the first time we've seen it. It's the second 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 time we've seen it. وفي نفس الوقت بيت البرلمان اللي احنا شايفينه على اليمين. And here in in Paris we have more marks for um, uh, basilica uh, and again the even in the website itself of the more marks it talks about Islamic influence in the domes and in the decoration. What's the name of the basilica again? Montmartre in Paris. Mont? 
small Martha. Martha. Okay. It's the mountain of the Martha. It's actually okay. 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 Was, Mount, um, was Mount of the Martyr. Uh, uh, Murtafa, Murtafa, Martyr. Martyr. Okay. Uh, so the the basilica that Mount of the Martyr. Uh, for, uh, for France, where you know, has the uh, Islamic, uh, thank you very much, Ilham, again, Montmartre. <laughs> She's writing it in the chat. Um, um, uh, uh, we have a lot of things that are Islamic in this basilica. Yes. And now, just across the Atlantic, to show you how Gothic entered America as well, this is the cathedral in New York. And again, you look at that and you see all the Gothic elements, the twin towers, the uh, flanking the monumental entrance, the pointed arches, the trefoil arches, the rose window. It's all there in, in America. Okay. ففي ده اللي احنا شايفينه ده لقطة لمبنى في أمريكا ويلاحظ إن, إن برضو التأثيرات هي موجودة من حكاية إن يبقى في برجين على جانبي المدخل كمان النوافذ الدائرية اللي هي اللي بتتسمى نوافذ زهرية على شكل زهرة في, في وسطها كمان نوع العقود المدببة والمختلفة اللي مستخدمة وكمان الزخرف اللي موجود وده في أمريكا. And and in America as well, the uh, Gothic is very popular in universities. So this is Yale um, University, which is almost uh, has many Gothic buildings. So the tower on the left. Uh, is a Gothic tower called the Harkness Tower, and on the right is the Lending Library in the university, which looks like the interior of a Gothic church. Yeah, حتى في الجامعات في أمريكا مستخدم الطراز القوتي اللي هو متأثر بالطراز العربي الإسلامي. اللي بتسمى ساراسنز فدي اللقطة دي من جامعة ييل اللقطة اللي على الشمال لبرج وملاحظين التفاصيل المعمارية اللي فيه اللقطة اللي على اليمين هو داخل مكتبة ييل وشايفين احنا الاعصاب اللي هي في السقف اللي هي شايلة ال مش مش هقول دوم بس شيلة ال ال السقفية كلها أعصاب متداخلة بنفس ال الطرز اللي إحنا شفناها في ال في العمارة الإسلامية. Yeah. And then and then finally just again in America the U.S. Uh, in Washington D.C. the Capitol Dome so the center of government you can see the Islamic dome the double the Islamic double dome the Saracen vaulting. System that um, Christopher Wren used in St. Paul's Cathedral is also in the heart of government in in America. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the White House, right? No, no. This is the Capitol Dome. This is this oh, is okay, like okay. Parliament, if you like. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for that, Capitol. Okay. Da, building. Yes, yes, yes. I can read down there. Okay. Fada ila 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 uba fi mabna ilulayat al mutahada ila huwa yusama capital. Wazay ma ma shayfin ihna fi mitakhdim bardo min al min al qubba bil islamiya il il orifat fi al fi al asur al al mutakadima shwaya. Wa in kanat sabaqat ila udami. فاللي هي الدوم اللي هي بدورين اللي هي بتسمى قبة مزدوجة اوكي يا and then and then the, the very last slide now just the, the to summarize if you like the whole point about what the book is trying to explain um, 
the person who actually understood it best was the um, the Rowan Williams, the the former Archbishop of Canterbury. So this is the head of the church in in this country in 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 England. Um, and what he wrote about the book, he 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 understood completely. He said the book shows. He said the splendidly illustrated book shows how our cultures, including our religious cultures, interact and interweave in ways that challenge all kinds of assumptions we might make about our history. By studying our past, um, the book poses essential questions about the possibility of a shared and humane civilization in the future. And, and that's the point of the book, that it's, it shows how everything builds on everything else, how nobody owns architecture, nobody owns science, everything, everything um, builds on everything else, and it's important to acknowledge that. Uh, okay. الكلام اللي فوق ده اللي كاتبه أحد الناس المهمة اللي قرت هذا الكتاب وهو روان ويليامز وده الأرش بيشوب اللي في كاتدرائية كانتربري السابق وهو بيكلم إنها بيقول هذا الكتاب اللي هو مليء بالصور الجميلة جدا والهيلة بيظهر كيف ان ثقافتنا بما فيها الثقافه الدينيه بتتفاعل وبتبتدي تنسج نسيج مندمج بيتحدى كل كل الافتراضات كل انواع الافتراضات اللي احنا ممكن تكون عندنا عن تاريخنا وبدراسه الماضي السيدة ديانا دارك بتطرح أسئلة حول إمكانية المشاركة إمكانية إن يبقى فيه حضارة إنسانية متشاركة بين كل الناس في المستقبل Exactly. Yes. Yes. Well done. I mean, my goodness, you've, you've worked so hard. Thank you. I mean, it's really, really. Difficult. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Done. <laughs> very, very tough. Thank very, you very, very tough much. for you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will keep my my questions for the last. I would like to entertain some of the questions of the people. Uh, دكتورة تحبوا uh, تحبوا ناخذ وقت مستقطع خمس دقائق راحة إذا ديانا uh, would you like to take five minutes uh, uh, break no 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 not at all no no I'm I'm keen to to go on you know and 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 I mean my goodness let's uh, let's just let's just get on and and, and, and complete okay. it yes okay uh, طيب um, we're we're going to take the questions as they uh, as they go so I'm going to begin with the first hands raised as it appears to me on the screen. هاخد الأسئلة تباعا حسب ظهورها عندي على الشاشة وهستبقي أسئلتي للآخر بعد بعد استضافة أسئلتكم. أول سؤال من الأخت عبير اللحام اتفضلي. إذا سمحتم خلوا الأسئلة تكون يعني مختصرة جدا ما هياش مداخلة طويلة عشان أستطيع إن أنا أنقلها ب بسهولة يعني. تفضلي لو تعبير تفضلي. مش سامعين كويس. هو في صدى في الصوت شوية لو في حاجة ممكن تتقفل عندك تخلي ما فيش صدى عشان في في إيكو كده أو في ريفربريشن مش عارف. ممكن تكتب ممكن تكتب الدكتورة. آه لا آه لو سمحتي 
عبير عشان صعب جدا الاستماع لك انا هاخد السؤال بتاعك بعد دكتور محمد فياض ارجو انك تكتبي السؤال وانا هقراه في الـ في الشات بوكس اوكي اوكي اه هي اوكي اتفضل استاذ محمد او دكتور محمد فياض اتفضل مساء الخير بداية أتوجه بالشكر الجزيل للباحثة الدكتورة ديانا دارك المتخصصة في الأعمار الإسلامية على ما قدمته من فكر وعلم وإيضاحات مؤيدة بالأدلة القطعية والتي تدحض فيها بعض الأراء التي تنكر تأثر العمارة الغربية بمفردات العمارة الإسلامية والشكر طبعا للموصول الدكتورة عفاف بدران وبراعتها في إدارة هذه الجلسة العلمية المهمة وهنا أود السؤال عن بعض القضايا وسأختصر قدر الإمكان هل هناك أسماء أخرى لبعض العمال المهر الذين أسهموا في نقل الحضارة من المشرق العربي إلى أوروبا غير الأسماء التي ذكرت وهل هناك وثائق دامغة بهذا الاتجاه طبعا غير الأسماء التي وردت في مسجد قرطبة طبعا نحن نعرف التاريخ هناك المعماري أبولو وسنان وغيرهم ولكن إذا في وثائق فهذا يعني أدلة قاطعة السؤال الثاني تحدثت الدكتورة في سياق الحديث عن حرفة الفسيفساء التاريخية والتي ازدهرت في بواكير العمارة المشرقية هل تعتقدين دكتورة بأن هذه الحرفة انتقلت أيضا من سوريا إلى أوروبا وهل سوريا برأيك هي موطن هذه الحرفة بلا منازع وهل للألوان دلالة في بناء المشيدات المعمارية نحو استخدام الحجر مثلا الابلق في مثلا في بلاد الشام وكذلك الزجاج المعشق في تنفيذ النوافذ. السؤال الاخير هناك الكثير من الحرف التي تفردت بها دمشق ومنها الموزاييك والزجاج المعشق وبما انك اقمت في سوريا فتره من الزمن في رحاب دمشق برايك ما هي اهم الحرف العميقه الموجوده في دمشق والتي لها رواسب ثقافية والتي تعتقدين أيضا بأنها انتقلت إلى فضاءات أخرى لا سيما تلك الحرف التي كانت لها علاقة مباشرة مباشرة في في المشيدات المعمارية وهل كان للخط العربي الإسلامي حضورا في بعض المشيدات الأوروبية وشكرا جزيلا. Uh, do you need translation for all that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, okay, these are five or six questions. I know. Uh, uh, so, would you like to have them one by one? Yes. yes. Okay, the first one. 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 Uh, other than the ones that were found in Cordoba in other places, uh, whether they are craftsmen or architects, and if there are uh, other documents, that's the first um, question. Not, not on European soil, no. Um, the only other places where, where the names of the craftsmen are recorded are actually um, in in uh, well, actually, in the West Bank, in in that in the in the Khedbat um, al this one near near Jericho, the the names because the archaeologists have have done such thorough excavations, they found the names of the of the craftsmen who just carved their own names on random bits of stone, mm. uh, and again, it shows it shows actually there that there was a, a bigger mix of. Um, you know, sort of half and half, almost Christian and, and, and Muslim um, craftsmen working from their names. You know, so names like Constantine, for instance, is obviously a Christian name. Um, so you know, you can see from the names whether they are Christian or Muslim. Okay. Uh, uh, he said, "No, there is no other one who is remembered. He is in another place. He is in the Mahjar." اللي هي برضو ذكرته غير قرطبة إنما الأسماء بتبقى مكتوبة وبيبقى واضح فيها الاسم العربي من الاسم الأجنبي بس هي بتقول مش على أرض أوروبية يعني ما فيش هذا التوسع في الـ في الـ 
في الاركايفز او في الحاجه اللي بتدل على العمال المهر اللي بتسال عليهم غير اللي هي ذكرته هي از اسكينج اباوت ذا ذا موزايكس از كود ات بي اولسو ترانسفيرد فروم ذا سكرافتسمان شيب اوف موزايك Could it also have been uh, tr uh, transferred to from Syria to uh, to Europe, and um, or from? Uh, also, he's asking about the the the, the um, colored uh, glass um, windows and uh, such work. Could it also yes. have? Well, yes, there's a, there's uh, a yes, lot. Yes. There's a lot about. The Uh, uh, in the book, there's a lot about the glass. Uh, there's just isn't time, you know. I mean, I have to take yeah, yeah, okay. out okay, of, of you know. Excellent. There's a lot about the glass and about okay. the origins of the glass and how okay. Syria, of course, was the world leader in glass. And so, okay. and the Crusaders yeah. learned a great deal about the use of glass, and and this was very influential in the stained glass of later Gothic cathedrals. Definitely, okay. there's a lot. About that in in the book, but there's Excellent. an awful lot more. I should say this straight away that there's so much more work to be done in this field. Really, Excellent. I mean, my book is just drawing a very big picture of the whole thing, a, a huge circular jigsaw, I call it sometimes. Um, but okay. really, there is so much more work to be done, and and I'm sure, you know, the, the names of craftsmen do not appear, um, but. I'm sure that sooner or later in excavations, maybe things will be found which will give indications. Mm. Mm. There's just so much more to, to discover. Mm. 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 الرد على سؤالك الثاني أو الثاني والثالث لأن ده مكتوب هي بتقول إن آه بالنسبة لل في الكتاب اللي هي كتبه في حاجات كتير جدا تتعلق بالفسيفساء والزجاج المعشى وإن وإن أنت لما هتقرأ كتاب إن شاء الله هتلاقي حاجات كتير قوي هي ما لم يتسع المجال لذكرها الحين وكمان ضروري نعرف إن هي الكتاب بتاعها بيفتح آفاق لمزيد من البحث والدراسات إن إحنا ما نقفش عنده لأن في حاجات هي ما ما قدرتش تستوعب في كتابها كل حاجة إنما هي شايفة إن في ثراء كبير جدا ممكن إن أبحاث أخرى توفيها The, the last question was about the, 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 the colors and if they have special connotation, the use of colors, and uh, what about the Arabic calligraphy? Yeah, well, again, these are huge, huge subjects which, um, uh, you know, need, need whole, whole things um, to, to go into. Um, the use of the colors, well, I mean, the gold and green are, are the two dominant colors that, that come through from, from the Byzantine early Christian times, you know, and, and the Umayyads adopt this, this green and gold colors because they represent paradise, if you like. You know, the, the gold is the sort of, you know, the richness and the green is, 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 the, is, the, is the, you know, the, the fertility of nature. Uh, so, so green and gold are always the dominant colors. Um, and, and I'm sure that they, they, that is very, very deliberate. Um, mm. By the way, the book um, has been translated into Arabic. Um, a published house in Beirut has, um, has, has published it in Arabic. So, What's the so name of the publisher, please? Uh, yes, now that's a good question. I forgot. You can, you can, <laughs> you, I'm sure you can Google it and, and find it, but it's, it's, okay. it comes out of Beirut anyway. It's, okay. it's called something like Scientific publishing house or something it definitely got the word scientific in the in the in its title very good okay uh, هي بتقول ان اه بالنسبه للالوان في اكتر لونين واخدين uh, uh, يعني اهميه كبيره جدا هو اللون الاخضر واللون ال ال الذهبي uh, وبتقول اه هي تطرقت لهذه لبعض هذه النقاط اللي انت ذكرتها في ال كمان فيما يتعلق بالخط العربي في الكتاب بتاعها وعلى فكرة الكتاب بتاعها ترجم إلى العربية حديثا في دار نشر في لبنان في بيروت وهي مش متذكرة بالضبط اسم الناشر إنما الناشر في كلمة scientific فإحنا لو بحثنا عن اسم الكتاب وعن كلمة scientific كناشر هتلاقيه بسهولة يعني Thank you very much uh, Dr. عبد المحسن فرحات is the next question السلام عليكم باختصار يا دكتور عبد المحسن ربنا يبارك لك عشان الحق اوفي
طيب انا ما بحبش عندي دور ثانك يو فيري ماتش اركيتكت هاتف دكتور عفاف اند ثانك يو فيري ماتش فيري ماتش بروفيسور for uh, Diana, uh, a comment, then a question. Uh, I think your work is very important, not only in being fair to the Islamic civilization, but also in terms of advancing the postmodern movement that calls for uh, that the world culture is based on multi centers, not only one uh, uh, European center. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, in this transfer of styles, let us say architectural styles, architectural forms, was this accompanied by a transfer of ideas, uh, intellectual ideas, uh, the work of Ibn Rushd, uh, the rational interpretation of religion, uh, transcending the literal interpretation, um, uh, people like Ibn Khaldun, I'm not sure about uh, the historic dates in, in each case, but was there uh, parallel or actually the, 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 the source, the, the cause for the transfer of the forms was uh, intellectual? And uh, I hope it is not um, uh, some kind of folklore like 1001 Nights or um, uh, drawing harem in uh, by Delacroix, etc. Uh, uh, last thing, what is your advice to uh, Muslim scholar, uh, scholars and architects? Thank you very much. Uh, 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 حركة ما بعد الحداثة التي تقول أو تنادي بأن حضارة العالم مبنية على عدة أقطاب وليس قطب واحد أوروبي المركزية الأوروبية كما كان في الماضي السؤال كان هل نقل الأشكال والتشكيلات والطرز المعمارية كان نابع من نقل أفكار يعني كان في تأثير فكري زي تأثير ابن رشد في التفسير العقلاني للدين ومجاوزة التفسير الحرفي وأشياء من ابن خلدون إلى آخره بس مع مراعاة التواريخ التي لست متأكدا منها وما هي نصيحتها للمفكرين والمعماريين المسلمين شكرا Thank you Diana Yes Well I'm, I'm quite sure that um, transfer of ideas also took place there's, there's no doubt about that but the uh, the thing that surprised me on researching this book was just how much movement there was, you know, in the days after all before easy travel with trains and planes and everything else and vehicles. Um, the amount of movement that took place, uh, you know, from Europe to uh, the Eastern Mediterranean and all around the Mediterranean was was massive, you know, pilgrims, merchants, clergymen, and, you know, not, as obviously apart from soldiers and, and all of that, but but the amount of um, movement, a, a lot of which was to do with with, with trade, um, and a lot of which was to do with, with the movement of pilgrims, uh, was, was, was truly surprising to me. And they all brought back objects with them, you know, um, souvenirs, uh, bits of this and that, you know, um, and on the religious front, there were lots of relics in, that were brought back um, and became very important. And, and definitely, um, it, it's, some, it's an area where, again, a lot more work needs to be done to try to pin down, for example, you know, I mean, Ibn Khaldun, I'm sure some of his theories um, will have influenced, you know, he's referred to, you know, as the father of sociology. I mean, the understanding of how civilizations rise and fall, all of that, I think, has been very influential, but I don't think anybody has properly studied it and written coherently about it for, for the general reader. This is, uh, this is something that I think would be very helpful if, if young scholars could, could do something like this. And, and so my, my, my advice to, um, you know, to young Muslim academics would be to, um, you know, to try to, to progress some of this work, try to, um, you know, to take it further, because what I've done really is just the beginning, is, is how I see it. It's, it's, it's 
um, I've come to it as a generalist, you know, I'm uh, rather than an academic taking a, a big picture view. But the trouble with academia very often is people are very narrow, they only focus on their own small area and they don't see the bigger picture. So, um, but you need people to, to do the detail work as well as the big picture work. So, so there's a huge amount of work to be done. Dr. Abdul Mohsen, what do you want to do with this? I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to do it. You are doing an impossible job. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm going to ask you, of course. She says that the travelers and the travelers of the Arab countries were going to take care of the travelers, and the travelers were going to take care of the travelers. على نقل الـ الـ العناصر او الفنون والـ والـ والعناصر الـ الاسلاميه فيما يتعلق باقوال ابن خلدون فبتقول ان هي بتنصح وترجو وان ان المسلمين يتبنوا مش بس تاثير اقوال ابن خلدون انما كل الحاجات اللي حاسين انها مش واصله للغرب انهم يتبنوها في الدراسه والابحاث بتقول يعني هي شخص مش شرط يكون اكاديمي بس هي شخص انسان عادي اطلع على الحاجه دي وحاسس انها عايزه توصلها فوصلتها فمش المفروض ان اي حد من من العرب يبقى خايف ان هو يخوض في في طرح المواضيع ونقلها للغه الانجليزيه او لاي لغه اخرى علشان تصل للناس لان في في حاجه شديده جدا لان ده يوصل للقرب ده باختصار وبشكل عام اوكي وي تيك ذا نيكست كويستشن فروم مستر طارق نازل هو بس بالاضافه ان ان قالت ان شغلها جنراليست بمعنى الصوره الشامله يا yeah. Okay. آه وان في شغل كتير مطلوب في في التخصص الدقيق لكن دون آه اغفال الصوره العامه دون فقدان الصوره العامه اللي كثير من الاكاديميين بيحصل وياهم هذا okay. سوري شكرا شكرا دكتور عصاف انا صلحت المايك بقدر انا احكي وير ار يو وير ار يو اي كانت سي يو يا اي واز اي واز ذا فيرست بس ذن ماي مايك كودنت اي كودنت يو كودنت هير مي ويل Anyway. Ah, 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 okay. Ta okay. Can I, can I take him next to, ta to okay. Mr. Tariq? No issue. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Tfaddal, uh, Ustaz Tariq. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Tariq Nazil. I am a, pro a professor of stone conservation in Egypt. Uh, first, I would like to uh, express my happiness to be with you in this interesting webinar. And secondly, uh, I want to express my thanks to Mrs. Dark, uh, the expert and writer in British uh, architecture. Uh, Mrs. Dark, uh, allow me to express my appreciation for your uh, courage to publish your book, uh, Stealing from Sarsens, after the storm of angry European reactions, which was provoked by your tweet after burning uh, the famous Notre Dame Cathedral in France on April uh, 19, uh, uh, 2019, in which you referred that uh, the French Cathedral was inspired by the architecture of uh, Kalbluza Church, located in Syrian uh, province of Idlib. Uh, I think that's back to uh, fifth century. Uh, uh, finally, I, uh, I uh, have a question. Uh, why did the Europeans imitate the Islamic architecture style? And uh, is this considered an implied acknowledgement of the superiority of Islamic architecture at that time? And why did they deny their imitation? Thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, everybody. And uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, Dr. Afef for translation and uh, uh, the invitation of uh, Mr. Head. Okay, can, can I? Uh, yes. So the, reason, uh, the reason it was imitated are two reasons, really. Um, first of all, they liked it because it's much, much more aesthetic to look at uh, than the straightforward round 
arch and 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 but also of course structural the pointed arch i didn't get a chance to mention this the pointed arch is structurally stronger than the round arch so this meant that buildings could be made taller taller and taller and this is why gothic then you know it became a competition after Cluny had the pointed arches and they realized that they could make the walls of the churches taller and taller and thinner and thinner and the, the, the windows bigger and bigger to let in more light. And then the stained glass windows become very important in, in that. And then of course they get so tall that they become unstable and that's when they have to invent the flying buttresses to hold them up. <laughs> and even then some of them fell down because they got so tall. So structurally, it enabled them to build much, much taller, stronger um, buildings. And also aesthetically, uh, you know, they let in the light. They were very attractive to look at. So, um, but, but as to uh, whether, whether it was, I think actually the whole thing about it not being acknowledged was partly ignorance. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, in the Middle Ages, people really didn't know very much. And the Gothic style, you know, we call it Gothic, but back then it was just called the French style because the French were thought to have invented it, the Norman French. Uh, it was only much later in the 16th century that the Italian art critic Vasari suddenly called it Gothic. And he was the same person who invented the term Renaissance. You know, these are words we use now, but these, these were centuries later. So, uh, you know, at the time it wasn't, um, it wasn't well understood. There was a lot, a lot of ignorance. So I, I think, I think it's more ignorance than deliberately, um, which is why in some ways it's come as a bit of a shock now I think what and why the book has been a bit controversial because it, it, it really has been forgotten if you like it's just been so appropriated the start gothic style has been so appropriated by Europe in all its churches and so many neo-gothic buildings that it, to think that oh the origin of most of this is in fact Islamic is is something people don't want to confront these days but um, well in my view it makes it all the more important for people to understand these these connections. Thank you. Bakhtasar Shadid here bit all in the Sabah bin Nakli, let no be hebu has a tarazu, has a shaklu, has he tafasil, was a gamel, a hagatania in the lark, the mahmus, a lahum ahadu, the Sabbat in no aqua in shay and minute the eri. وده أدى لأن الـ إن الأبنية ممكن أصبحت أطول وأكبر وده إداهم إداها فرصة للانطلاق إلى أعلى وأنهم يرتفعوا بالبناء بدأوا يرتفعوا بالبناء أطول كتير قوي لدرجة أن يعني المبالغة خلت بعض المباني تبقى ضعيفة إنشائيا وده عرضها للوقوع وده بيحصل في أي مبالغة بتحصل بيبقى لها سايد إفكت يعني بتتكلم عن عدم الاعتراف السؤال اللي انت سألته عن ليه ما بيعترفوش بده بتقول عدم الاعتراف هو ناتج أساسا عن جهل مش عن عمد لأن اللي بينقل لهم الحاجة مثلا زي ما حصل في حالة هي ذكرتها إنه أعتبروا إن الشخص الفرنسي اللي نقلها ده هو صاحبها ما, ما, ما رجعوش لهو نائل منين فهو بتقول إن السرعة والجهل هو اللي بيخلي الناس ما, ما, ما بتقولش إن ده كذا مش زي ما حصل مثلا في, في, في بعض الأماكن مذكور فيها من العمال من المعماري من إلى آخر شكرا جزيلا للأسئلة وشكرا للإجابة دلوقتي عندي دكتور حسن وعندي عبير فين عبير راحت أيوة أوكي هو دكتور حسن كان دوره بس لأن عبير كانت قفل الميكروفون بتاعها في الأول خالص كأول واحدة رفعت إيدها فاستسمحك دكتور حسن هناخد سؤال عبير وبعدين حضرتك أوكي تفضلي أخت عبير Okay, shukran okay. jazeelan. Thank you, thank you, Diana. It's wonderful, wonderful uh, talk. Um, actually, I, I just have one, one, 
question or comment. Um, during the Orientalist uh, writings about Islamic architecture and Islamic cities, there was kind of accusation that Muslims took or borrowed certain elements. The root of Islamic architecture, they tried to prove that the roots of Islamic architecture lies in in uh, the Western Byzantine or sometimes the Sasanian in the Eastern. But today we are taking another defensive uh, stand, uh, which I can actually um, trace in your, in your talk and book. Um, I feel that there is kind of accusation in both ways, who took from whom. You did not put it in a way that it is kind of a cultural dialogue or, you know, in, in, in the past that, that um, uh, copyright or that sense of plagiarism was not there. So that it was kind of a mutual effect. Now we feel that, no, we are taking that modern stand that stands that um, it is one way production. Either we took from them or they took from us. Now, in the beginning of your talk, when you, when you mentioned that Muslims synthesized what they borrowed from the others, it was kind of um, kind synthesis. But when um, the Western took from, from the Muslims, you try to be kind of selective in your examples to prove that Muslims are the top hand and they shaped Europe. For me, I feel that it's 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 two way process. Uh, we cannot we cannot uh, say that we sh uh, Muslims shaped Europe or Europe or uh, Byzantines or Sasanians shaped Muslims. Yeah, and for example, after after the what, what they call now the Gothic has you know uh, been matured, the the um, then it was transferred again to 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 Cairo and and uh, uh, Sultan Mansur. So I feel that it's two way. Thank you. Mm. No, I agree. It, it is two way. It is two way. I mean, um, but as I explained at the beginning, uh, you know, my my mission, if you like, in this book was to, you know, was because of the, the Notre Dame fire, really. That's what triggered the whole thing for me. So so my my starting point was that. Um, but also from what I've from from my own research is, to be honest, more did come from east to west than the other way around. Of course, there was some west to east, but but in these in those early centuries, um, it was definitely uh, it was the eastern Mediterranean areas that were more sophisticated and more advanced. So they had more. Uh, later, of course, it tended tended to be more the other way around. But but at, at the beginning part, up until the Middle Ages. Um, my own research led me to believe that more came from the east than the other way around. That, was, that, was, that was what I concluded. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Abir Laham كانت بتقول كانت وجهة نظرها باختصار شديد جدا بتقول إن 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 إحنا يعني في طرح ديانا كانت بتقول إن إن ممكن يكون ال اتأثر العرب المسلمين ببعض حاجات وكلمت فيها بناحية تبدو شكلها إيجابي أكثر بينما لما جت تتكلم على الغرب اتكلمت على أنهم سرقوا هذه العناصر مش أنهم اتأثروا بيها زي ما المسلمين اتأثروا بغيرهم دي كانت النقطة اللي بتطرح عبير وردت عليها ديانا وقالت أن هي تعتقد أن في الفترة اللي هي ما قبل العصور ال أو لغاية نهاية العصور الوسطى كان التأثر الغربي باللي جاي من الشرق أكتر من التأثر الشرق تأثر به من الغرب ولهذا كان المنحة بتاع الكتاب بتاعها طبعا العصور اللي تلت ده ممكن يكون تأثر العرب بالطرز الغربية أكتر إنما هي بتتكلم على الفترة اللي هي لغاية العصور الوسطى ده, ده الفترة اللي كانت بتتكلم عليها ديانا وأكدت على إن هي بتعتقد إن هي الطرح بتاعها صحيح فيما يتعلق ب, ب, بأخذ الـ الأوروبيين الـ العناصر المعمارية الإسلامية فأكدت ده في, في, في العصر اللي هي بتتكلم عليه أوكي فضل دكتور حسن ثانك يو أم سوري بيكوز أم فاميك تمورو سو to say, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I have no problem with the idea that if people say it is our identity, we have no problem with that. 
The idea basically is that in human beings, when we have products, the products with the other products, with the culture, they make synthesis and then they merge and then they hyper and then they end, they say, it is us, it's our identity. The only problem that uh, what you have done, which has to be created that you authenticate that things came from the origin. I want to highlight this, it's in human culture in general, you know, it happens with the language, with the culture, with the religion. Christ came from Palestine to Damascus and then from Damascus to Egypt to Turkey. And the Roman adopted, when they adopted, they say we are Catholic, now it's our identity. What I want to say at the end, the, when Europe started, uh, actually they took from Greek. The Greek, they took from Pharaohs. Pharaohs, they, when they have their, 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 their temples, they, they have done a great pillar, big pillars with the authentic stone, big stone. They didn't, uh, I mean, built uh, 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 the, uh, 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 I mean, the arches, but sometimes they made it by mud in some villages, yes. But I mean, that's the culture transferred to Roman. Roman, they have got the gables and they have that monolithic beam. And then uh, this kind of ionic uh, 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 columns came from uh, pharaohs. The, pro the, the idea when they sprawl out and they reach the Sicilian uh, area, they have, the, they have noticed the miracle that from the brick because their culture basically, basically comes from the mud. The mud comes gradually to create a, a, a ceiling and they create a roof, which is for them was something amazing. So from there, they, they adapted the, the vaults, the dome, the, the, the crossing and so on, and other things as well. What I want to say at the end, that it's great that we have to highlight the culture of the human being, uh, how it is generated. And uh, no problem, people can say it's us at the end, but yet they have to learn, and it's our, our responsibility to, to, to highlight such a culture that how it is uh, highly from where. Thank you very much. Mm. But okay. I will translate if you want. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah. but in short, please, in short. أنا طولت أنا معلش دائما أنا طول أنا المشكلة على العموم هي هي ثقافة إنسانية طبيعية إحنا يعني من خلال اللغة والكالتشر ولا ده كله خدناه من التاريخ وتربينا عليه وتصورنا أن دي هي هويتنا إحنا بنقول إن الرومان نفسهم أو الحضارة الروبية حتى ما كانوش يعرفوا لا لفولت ولا ولا الكلام ده لا ما راحوا وتفاعلوا مع العمارة الطينية اللي ظهرت في بلاد السسان وفي الأخير إحنا همنا إنه مش عيب الناس تقول صحيح ان لينا هويه لكنه من الخطا انه ما نوثقش الهيومن كلتشر ونعترف به ونقدره بس ذات شكرا شكرا جزيلا would you like to have a comment Diana? Uh, well only only really to say i mean i completely agree with what you're saying um well, my comment would be that um i as a you know as a, as a european brought up in brought up in the in the um you know in the education system um of of england like so many people of my age if you like is that i am a product of the education system that i i was brought up with which taught me that civilization was greece and rome and really that's where it ended and and that was um you know that was something i didn't uh so i i grew up believing that like like most europeans did that, that that greece and rome were the center of everything and that um they invented they invented everything and uh and it was only uh when i switched to arabic at university then and traveled beyond europe that i began to think wait a minute you know <laughs> even the greeks with their temple didn't get that gable shape they didn't invent that either. That came from the Eratians in Anatolia. <laughs> and I, I began to understand that, um, that it really wasn't that simple. So um, I think it's important in, in education systems to, for people to understand how, how complex these things are. And that it's certainly, you know, there has been historically a very Eurocentric way of looking at things. And part of what I'm trying to do is to, is to break that if you like to make people realize you know europe is really not the center of the universe thank you very much uh will diana here kaurupia here and it's a good terbia will tell him a little bit to tell him to the blood her uh here in the hadar or here in the union or roma will i'm a target the dress up the gamma larabia 
بدات تطلع على ان لا ان ده مش مش هو صحيح وان في اسهامات اخرى في الحضاره فده ده اهم اللي هي قالته باختصار شكرا دانا ساره السلام عليكم السلام ورحمه عندي مشكل في اللغه شويه اللغه العربيه وما تحدثش لي بس اختصري وانا ترجمة في صح مشكلة. اوكي ميرسي آه هي اشارت في الاول لنقطتين انها كاين تشابه كبير بين العماره القوطيه الجوتيك ستايل والعماره الاسلاميه لكن العماره القوطيه عندها شيئين رئيسيين هما اللي مرتكز عليهم الهيكل الخفيف هيكل خفيف اللي مبني ثقله بطريقه ذكيه الثقه اللي ينقلوا للخارج بدواعم هل الدواعم هذه كاينه في هل موجوده في العماره الاسلاميه وثاني شيء العمارة النورية أي الستايل جوتيك مبني على النوافذ ويدخل النور للكاتدرالية أو المبنى القوطي مثل ما كاين في الشابيل دو باري هل هناك مبنى نوري مثله في العمارة الإسلامية هذا السؤالين فقط ميرسي شكرا أوكي okay. Uh, she said that uh, there, you, uh, there are two basic uh, uh, um, similarities between the Gothic and the Islamic uh, styles. The first one is the, the light uh, weight uh, structure. Uh, and uh, and the, the second point is that the Gothic architecture is known to be an architecture of light. Where a lot of light is uh, uh, entering into the building through the the, the windows, is this uh, something that you find uh, 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 present in the Islamic architecture? That's her question. Well, well, yes. I mean, it, it's uh, it's equally important in in uh, in the Islamic architecture, and. Uh, you know, in the Quran, there are so many uh, verses about light and the importance of light. So it, it's very much a fundamental part of uh, many religions, to be honest. You know, the, the light, equating light with, uh, with, with God and, and with a sort of, um, you know, the, the, the power of, of, of creation. Um, but I think in architecture, the most obvious uh, place where 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 certainly it struck me is is in Sinan's Ottoman architecture. Certainly, um, the sort of big mosques, uh, the first mosques that really were you know under one dome, uh, letting in with huge windows. Uh, the the Mehrimah, uh, mosque that he built, for example, was one of the very first, much much lighter than any other um, early earlier mosques. So. Um, uh, I, I think it has it has huge importance in both in both religions, but I, I see it in architecture most in in Ottoman Ottoman architecture. Okay, he is between ayah is mawjuda in 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 the Gothic and the Islamic, and he is sure of its presence in Islamic and on their attention to it. بال... هي يعني ركزت أكتر في الرد على الجانب النوري اللي أنت ذكرتيه وهي يعني إدخال النور الطبيعي لداخل الكيان المبني أعتقد ودي جزئية من عندي يعني كمعمارية إن الاهتمام بأنها تبقى عمارة نورية في في اوروبا وده لان اصلا هم ما عندهمش الشمس اللي موجوده عندنا في في المنطقه العربيه او في الميدل ايست فبالتالي التركيز قوي على انها تبقى نوريه كانت كانت حاجه بالنسبه لهم ضروري تتقال انما بالنسبه لنا احنا في المنطقه العربيه حاجه طبيعيه جدا ان يبقى في ادخال للنور و وما هياش بتركيز كبير لان اي قدر من الفتحات هيدخل النور الطبيعي القوي اللي بيجي من شمسنا شكرا جزيلا وال... ساره يس باردون الدعامات الدعامات لي كونتر يعني الدعامات اللي موجودين خارج الاركيتكتور غوتيك 
Okay, uh, Diana, she mentioned in her first part of the question about that the Gothic uh, uh, architecture is known for its light construction. She said, uh, if you kindly comment on that. Uh, you know, you mentioned the, 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 the possibility Not of resist. having support for special uh, uh, structures. Uh, which uh, which she does not find, for example, in the Islamic architecture. So, can no, we... well, that's right. Because because uh, the thing about Gothic architecture is the height. You know that it goes taller and taller, and so that's why the flying buttresses became necessary. Um, interestingly, actually, in the Cordoba Mesquita, it's not a tall building, but there are buttresses on the outer walls. Um, so so. Uh, you know, but but the whole philosophy of light, of course, is what um, Suger, Abbot Suger, you know, he's credited with the first um, Gothic building in, in Saint Denis. Um, he, this is where we come back to, you know, Saint Denis, as I said right at the beginning of the talk. Uh, he, he, the book that he was, um, well, you know, that this disciple of St. Paul, as he was thought to be, what he wrote, it was called Celestial Hierarchies, which is all about um, the power of light, and letting in God's light. Uh, and that's why um, Abbot Suger talks about this in the inscriptions in Saint-Denis. He talks about, you know, letting in the light. Um, and so this was this did become a very important thing in Gothic to make the windows bigger and bigger, and in order to do that, you had to make the the walls taller and taller, and thinner and thinner, and as a result, they became unstable. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, we go to the next question. Do we need translation for this? It's okay. No, merci. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. So, El Hin says, Doctor Mahmoud El Shandidi. Fadal. Shukran, Doctor Afaf. Thank you. I, I just I would like to thank Doctor Bayana for her uh, wonderful and dense uh, lecture, uh, which illustrating a lot of uh, a lot of issues with uh, with with very sincere and brave uh, attitude. Just my question, during your research, Dr. Diana, have you uh, uh, find some uh, ways of how the knowledge transferred in, uh, in educating architecture to, to develop such wonderful architecture, since we know that most of the, of the, of the learning was in a tacit way, so have you, or just you can open this for us. How the 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 the, the architect transfer their ideas for others to be creative as them. And uh, by the end, uh, we thank you and we look look for the for the translation. And I think just I was in a talk with some of the professors that would want to transfer. Uh, maybe another request to translate your. Uh, book uh, in, in Egypt also. Thanks, Dr. Diana, and thanks, Dr. Afar. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, OK. <laughs> أنا السؤال بتاعي ليها هل وهي أثناء بحثها توصلت لبعض الأفكار الجديدة المتعلقة بكيفية نقل المعلومات المعمارية بشكل غير أكاديمي من المعماريين اللي نفذوا ده للأجيال اللي بعد منهم على أساس أنهم يطوروا الرؤى بتاعتهم لأن معلوم أن 90% من المعلومات اللي انتقلت في الأصول القديمة كانت ليست بالشكل الأكاديمي الذي يتعلم به الناس الآن شكرا جزيلا شكرا شكرا Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is this is an area that really needs a lot of more work, um, and and I'm sure there's a lot to discover here. But um, what what I learned is that um, Muslim craftsmen 
clearly came to Europe in many different ways. Uh, and, and in Spain, obviously, when the Reconquista happened um, at the end of the 15th century, a lot of Muslims stayed and worked on, you know, architecture palaces and whatever for their new Christian rulers, which is why, you know, so many, so many of them wanted that, that, you know, kept the style. But a lot of them also left and went north in, into France and, and were, and then became sort of master masons, like, who passed their skills on. Um, and the other thing that is a little bit recorded, and, and I'm sure it actually happened quite a lot, much more than we realize, is that in the Crusades, a lot of um, prisoners, well, it's difficult to know whether they were the, was voluntary or involuntary, um, but when came back to, uh, uh, to European countries, and the one case that has been, um, you know, documented is the case, and I mentioned this in the book, um, of, a, of, a, of a, a mason, a Muslim mason who came back and uh, his, he, he worked for um, uh, a Welsh knight and he built the Abbey of Neath. And then his, um, the Welsh knight died and this, this Muslim craftsman transferred to become the architect of, um, of King Henry and, and built a lot of the, um, the round towers, which uh, became the hallmark then of the sort of coastal defenses. Uh, so, 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 Again, you know, it, it's because so little is documented about the craftsmen themselves. Um, it's an area that's very difficult to to um, to fully get to the bottom of. But I'm quite sure that the more people research into this, the more they will find. Thank you very much. Okay, he is talking about that. In the among the among the wasail that it nailed by some of the the هي ان كان الصليبيين لما بياخدوا مسجونين بياخدوا من ضمنهم حرفيين وكان الحرفيين دول بيكونوا براعين في, في عمل في الانشاء وعمل التفاصيل اللي احنا شفناها في في المنطقه العربيه الاسلاميه و, و, وهي ما عندهاش دليل يعني او لا تعلم اذا كانوا كانوا بيشتغلوا الحاجات اللي اشتغلوها في اوروبا ب يعني ب ب بدون ضغط او يعني بتطوع او بلا تطوع ده ده اللي هي ما تعرفوش بالظبط وممكن البحث فيه انما هي تعلم مثلا ان واحد منهم وكان بارع جدا كان بنى ابي لواحد من من الفرسان الملكيين وهذا الفارس الملكي توفى فبعد كده انتقل هذا الحرفي الرائع او الـ الـ يعني الـ اللي يده كويسه جدا في هذه الحرفه لكينج هنري وبنى له حاجات كتير قوي منها الابراج الدائريه اللي كانت مشهوره بها العماره الاسلاميه فده اللي هي بتقوله بس ما فيش ما فيش زي ايه حاجات في الارشيف او حاجات في المدونه بشكل تفصيلي عن كل هذه الحاجات دي حاجات بتبقى فرديه مكتوبه طبعا كل ده مجالات للبحث بنكتشفها شكرا لسؤالك و I should just say I have to leave at eight o'clock at the latest, so just just to let you know that. So you have we have another fourteen minutes. Already been a long time. Yes. We have. Sorry, I have to leave at eight o'clock. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. إذا تكرمتم الأسئلة الجاية تكون مختصرة جدا عشان برضو أجد فرصة إن أنا أسألها والمهندس هادف يجد فرصة برضو إنه يقول كلمته. دكتور ناجي فضلي. Dr. Ngazilan, thank you very much, Dr. Afif, for your translation. And of course, thank you very much, Diane, for your uh, wonderful lecture. Uh, I, I won't be long. I just want to ask you one question. Uh, 
do you think that uh, the uh, presence of the Arabs and Muslims in the island of Malta uh, also helped in transferring uh, these uh, architectural styles uh, in Europe? Because I visited Malta many years ago and I noticed that it was very, you know, a lot of similarities in, uh, and in style and some of the, our Palestinian friends who were with us thought it was very much like Jerusalem as well. So this is my question, but I just want to say one remark that I think your work is, is, is great and it helps, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, counter the Islamophobia trend uh, in the West. When you, such, uh, you know, that the Muslims, <laughs> what the civilization and how it's, transferred and so on and it is very very helpful thank you very much shukran uh, dr mm. nagia tisal mm. an uh, excuse me then i'll just yeah. translate very quickly بتسأل عن إذا كان هي إذا كان ديانا تعلم إن الطرز السائدة في مالطا ممكن تكون اللي هي متأثرة جدا بالطراز الإسلامي لدرجة إن صديقة فلسطينية كانت معاها قالت لها إنها حاسة إنها في القدس بتسأل إذا كان الطرز دي أو المالطيين ساعدوا في نقل الطراز ده لأوروبا ده ده السؤال الأساسي وبليز جو هيا ديانا Yeah, well, just just to, to say, uh, yes, and definitely Malta shows the influence as well. I, I mention it a little bit in, in the book, but I don't go into the same kind of detail as I do with the other gateways, as I call them, gateways into Europe. There's a whole chapter called Gateways into Europe, uh, which explains that. And, and Malta is only covered very briefly in that, but you're absolutely right. It definitely played its role as well. Yeah. And thank you for your comments about... Uh, the importance of the work I, it makes me um makes me happy to know that that you feel um that it's uh, important work thank you thank you very much diana that means you understand arabic i'm happy you do <laughs> <laughs> because that part particularly i missed at the end of uh, nagia's uh, words mm -hmm. thank you thank you nagia and thank you uh, diana for this now i have uh, uh, Dr. Hassan, Dr. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Taher, and Maher Hami. Uh, Dr. Hassan, would you please give the opportunity for those who didn't talk before? I hope so, if possible. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Taher, go ahead, please. Faddal. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Dr. Maher Hamid, please go ahead. تحياتي لكم شكرا دكتورة شكرا دكتورة ديانا فقط نحن لدينا عمارتين العمارة الشعبية التي تخص المجتمع وعمارة الدولة لماذا رغم أنه عمارة المجتمع لدينا ثرية من ناحية البيئية ومن ناحية المعمارية لماذا لم يكن هناك تأثر في العمارة الشعبية وكانت التأثر فقط في العمارة الرسمية التي تخص الهديرة كنائس وغير ذلك أو فقط كملاحظة بالنسبة للعمارة النورية اللي سألت عنها الصديقة لا يوجد في كنيسة قلب لوزا اللي هي تعتبر من أقدم الكنائس أو الأب الروحي للكنائس توجد العمارة النورية موجودة أوكي كان يو لو سمحت ممكن بس الجزء الأول من السؤال عشان فتني بالنسبة للعمارة لدينا دائما عمارتين عمارة الدولة وعمارة أوكي. الشعب Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. How, uh, uh, he is asking about uh, uh, that all the focus here was about the, the, the religious architecture and the, the architecture of the elite or the, the, the high class. Why isn't there any uh, um, a transfer to the, archi the vernacular architecture or the popular architecture? Well, th there's very little, um, very little that you can see. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm deliberately focusing on the, you know, the, the, the structures which everybody knows. I mean, uh, I mean, can, can you see anything? I mean, I, I, if, if there is 
that kind of transfer, um, the remnants are not visible to me at any rate. I mean, uh, only a little bit, if you like, in, in terms of the, the, um, the urban structure of Venice, you know, the way the town evolved in lots of little alleyways and this kind of thing, you know, to give shaded, um, you know, this is thought to have been copied from, from Islamic cities, but um, in the way people lived, I mean, the Venetians deliberately adopted some of these lifestyle um, things because they they um, they enjoyed it. They 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 liked it. Um, they had roof terraces, for example, which um, they copied from the sort of roof platforms in in Damascus. I talk about that a little bit, but um, most of the time, the architecture that's left to, to us to see now because it was built more strongly, um, even though it's, you know, I mean, so, so much of the popular architecture, as you call it, would, would not have been built of materials that would have lasted as, as well. So, so the evidence is, 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 you know, is less obvious. Okay, shukran. Okay, Bakhtasar uh, Shadid uh, Giddan here, Bitul, in Nahia, Yani, أو ما فيش مراجع للعمارة الشعبية وما فيش وصول لها والشيء الثاني إن ما كانش فيه اجتهاد لأن ده يوصل الأمر الآخر هي إن ضعف المواد اللي تبنت بيها خلتها ما تعيش كفاية لدرجة إنها تتنقل فدي أهم عنصرين خلوا إن ما فيش استفادة منها طبعا هي ممكن لأن هي متجهة اتجاه معين في شغلها فما ما لم تلتفت لل لل للجانب الآخر بس أنا أؤكد لك إن في كتب دلوقتي بدأت تبقى عن الفرناكلر أركيتكتشر وزي مثلاً كتاب في السعودية اسمه Back to Earth أوكي ف وكتب تانية سواء كان بقى لشغل حسن فتحي أو غيره فده موجود وموجود باللغة الإنجليزية بس هي مجال بحثها كان محدد في في موضوع النهاردة ف فجائز السؤال بتاعك اتخد بعيد عن مجالها شوي شكرا جزيلا دكتور حسن لو حابب تقول أنا مش عارفة هو موجود معنا لسه ولا I can't see his name هو يبدو إنه كان عايز يعمل مداخلة ثانية بس حبينا نمشي بس بترتيب الناس طيب uh, uh, now we have six minutes. Uh, okay. Uh, head if, if, if you must you allow... be exhausted. <laughs> yes, I am exhausted. But anyway, I have to give the opportunity to everybody. But at the same time, I, I wanted to have... Uh, uh, actually, I had prepared three slides to share with you. But I will have to just to respect the time, uh, just uh, talk about the point I wanted to ask you. And that is the choice of the word Saracens in our uh, meeting today, you explained more than what you did on the videos that I've seen. Mm -hmm. On the videos, you, you, you just uh, uh, concentrated that it is for the, you know, the dramatic uh, sense of, uh, okay, stealing from the stealers, sort of. But here you explained that it was like Christopher Ryan who first said mm. that uh, yeah. there was a great influence from the, the Saracens. Mm. Uh, I don't know exactly, I was researching, but I found that the, the Saracens became, uh, as a term, became obsolete at some time, even before, uh, or almost before the, the, the magnificent architecture of Muslims started. So I, I, I know that in Europe, maybe they still continued to use the word Saracens for the Arabs, but I would have wished that uh, you know instead of uh, uh, of uh, attributing an architecture of the islamic and arabic world after it became advanced to the people of long ago the saracens it it would have been better to attribute it to the right people this is this is my point of uh, mm. of argument mm. uh, because the saracens at that time did not have a magnificent architecture you, the Europeans just continued to call the Arabs Saracens. Yeah, that's wrongly. right. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. They did. They did. No, that's right. I'm afraid it stayed in use. I mean, it was the language of Christopher Wren's time. I mean, it was the only word that was used. Saracens. Yeah. You know, that was, yeah. And it must have been from the Crusader times that yeah. 
that that's that's how became the word that 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 was used. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. There's a lot of um, influence still in, in, in Sicily and in southern Italy um, and even in places like Switzerland. Uh, there's a, a surname, you know, family name, Sarazin, which mm. is which is directly Saracen. You know, I mean, it, it is it's a common it's quite a common uh, family name, you know, surname in um, in Italy, for example. Yeah, yeah, exactly. أنا كنت باختصار بسأل على إن أنا كنت أفضل إن العنوان العنوان بدل ما يقول السرقة من السرسنز اللي هم أصلا السرسنز دول كانت كانت تسمية أيام ما قبل الإسلام حتى يعني كانت من أيام الـ الـ نقول إيه ما قبل الميلاد واستمرت للعصور الوسطى بس ما ما نهضة نهضة العمارة العربية الإسلامية جت بعد ما لفظ السرسنز ده اختفى من الوجود فكنت بقول ان كان حلو قوي ان الكلام يبقى موجه للناس اللي فعلا انتجوا العمارة العظيمة مش الناس اللي هم اندثروا و... وماتوا بغض النظر عن هم بقى كلمة سرسنز جاية كسارقين او كلمة سرسنز جاية والترجم اصلا في مراجع كتير قوي انها جاية من الشرقيين لان اليونانيين او اللاتينيين كانوا بينطقوا حرف السين كش مش اس وحرف السي اللي هو السي اللي جاي في كلمة سرس كان بينطقوها ككا فانت لو استبدلنا الحرفين الحرف الاولاني بشين والحرف الثاني بك هتبقى شرقيين مش سارقين بس فانيوي ذيس از جاست ان اكسبلانيشن ام شور يو نو ات يو نو ات دايانا اي نو اي نو اتس اتس اول اتس اول I um, thank you very much. Christopher Wren. It's Christopher Wren's language. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. I thank yeah. you very much for your book. Thank you very much for your lecture and your presentation uh, and your sincerity. And your sincerity in uh, answering all these questions. I thank every. وبشكر كل الناس اللي موجودة معانا النهاردة. شكرا جزيلا ليكم واحد واحد اللي موجود لسه واللي اختفى. فأنا بشكركم وأترك الكلمة للأستاذ سالم هادف منسق ومنظم هذه الندوة تفضل دكتور سالم شكرا دكتور عفاف على الجهد الكبير الذي قمت به I thank you a lot for for the big great great efforts for of traduction translation I warmly thank Mrs Diana for his uh, nice and, and, and very, very interesting uh, book. And uh, I, uh, I wish for her, uh, her uh, future projects uh, success. Uh, I, I think we, we, can, uh, we can work uh, together in the future. Uh, uh, I want to, to say that uh, the current work draw its details and uh, arguments support and prove that our project of preventing heritage in the, the Arab world is a project that has logical foundation and is, it, it is, uh, necessary, is a necessity. We are sure that this work and other that we are uh, presenting will participate and orient uh, the universities and the research centers to work seriously on this project in order to realize, realize it in a credible and global way. Uh, thank you for everyone. شكرا للجميع. أردت أن أشير إلى أن لقاء اليوم واللقاءات التي قمنا بها سابقا تؤكد على أن مشروع إعادة كتابة التراث في 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 العالم العربي هو مشروع يحتاج لمزيد من البقود ونتمنى أن تأخذه الجهات الأكاديمية والمراكز البحثية في بجدية. I, I, I want uh, last last uh, word from from uh, uh, Mrs. Diana to to close the evening. Yeah, well, well thank, thank you very much, just for uh, especially Afaf for, for for such hard work. The translation, I mean, I knew it would be difficult, but I I have nothing written down. You see, I I just use the pictures as my prompt. I have no notes. I I just I just talk for the pictures. So, you know, I I wasn't going to. <laughs> <laughs> it will be it would be too time consuming for me to do this but um anyway yes well i mean i'm i'm very glad that um you know that you've uh that you have that that there are so many people working on these areas i'm i'm very glad to to know that and and 
believe me, I really will be very happy if, um, you know, if, if more, more and more uh, young Muslim architects and engineers become involved in, in, in learning these incredibly complicated, but I think important um, subjects, because there, there are so many secrets, if you like, still, still to be uncovered, I think. Um, uh, you know, I certainly learnt a huge amount from, from researching this book, and uh, uh, I know that there's still so much more to learn. So thank you very much. Thank Good you. night to everybody. Good night. Thank you. Shukran al-Jamia. Shukran al-Jamia. Wa umsiya sa'id al-Jamia. Wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum.